Brendan is at the big desk. See you guys. Hey guys, yeah, welcome in. Two o'clock on a busy afternoon here as we get into the final couple of hours of, uh, yeah, a Fed interrupted kind of a day here. Um, Fed Chair Powell not really saying anything. We haven't heard uh, or knew already in the sense that, yeah, inflation's still a problem and uh, really not showing any signs of lessening at this point. Um, I, I brought up this chart to kick us off here this afternoon. That's a 30 year. Uh, we got up to 4.805 at the highs there. Highest level since all the way back in November of last year. So it's been a while uh, since we've been up here. On That came on some of these comments that, um, you know, it's, it's taking a little bit longer than expected and, and they still want to see a uh, clear path towards that 2%. That's what he's been, he's been saying over and over and over again uh, for what seems like months now because it has been months. Uh, a few other things of note. Uh, here's Tesla downside in a pretty big way, 3.5% right now, uh, trying to roll over once again with the overall market. Apple, yeah, ugly. 1.8% uh, into an actual pretty green board, really, when you think about it. Uh, zoom out a little bit. It's the chips doing a lot of the heavy lifting here this afternoon. Banks very mi uh, mixed um, outside of Morgan Stanley. We'll tell you why here coming up in a second. BAC, JP Morgan, uh, WFC downside. Uh, about 50-50 here for healthcare stocks, pharmaceutical names uh, specifically under a little bit of uh, pressure. UNH up 5% off a decent report, 3.5% uh, again today for Tesla, uh, everything else there or thereabouts. So pretty mixed overall. That's the way the market looks right now. Uh, downside right now, trying to roll over a 503 coming into play once again for the uh, SPY. Fetcher Powell is saying supply side really recovered in 2023. Uh, thought it would be in 2021 and 2022. So, yeah, uh, let's see. They're, they are still talking here, so we'll keep an eye out for more comments as we head through the afternoon. But let's get into a little bit of a review. One of those days when you get to um, this type of event, you have to kind of take your foot off the gas when it comes to uh, when this is actually happening or during the period it's actually happening. Uh, there was so much to look at this morning. If you're with us in the pre-market, join us every day. At 8.30, we get you set for the open at 9.30 uh, in the pre-market. Uh, two, it was, what was it, 2.2% pre-market for Tesla. Yeah, a little bit more than that now. Uh, downside, uh, I mean, just follow through. Look at this two, three days in a row here to the downside coming off this report of job cuts. Really hasn't been much in the way of positivity. We did try and bounce there, guys. I saw we got down to... 152, 153 at the lows there this morning. But here we go again, accelerating right now for Tesla. Oh, yeah, what's up with that? What's up with that? You're muted. I'm muted. Oh, you Actually, got it. you know what better is like money. All right. Um, yeah, look, we had Tesla. What's up, Fabian? Yeah, that's right. Shake your head at him, Fabian. Very unprofessional, Neil. Somebody has to have a mic off at some point every single Well, let day. that be Sharif. He had it off twice, I think, already today. It was me this time. Um, and it was you this time, okay. Um, we'll get that figured out. We'll get our money back in that professional training that we received. Um, okay, so, yeah, you didn't receive any? Um, all right. Needless to say, I didn't. That's for sure. Everybody knows I didn't. Um, okay, so let's just uh, talk about this real quick. So Tesla, again... You know, we liked the short today. We wrote it down 160 was the short that we really liked. We never got into that 160 at all. So we shorted the pops off the open. We actually got hit early because it broke back above uh, the pre-market bottom there. So we had to use a level somewhere to get out. Uh, so we did. But then we realized that it wicked high um, and then stopped. Then we wanted that short again and we nailed that one more time. We reloaded it. Tesla's an up stock today. Not focused on trading really during the middle of the day, especially when we just get off. But right here at around 11.30, that was another great opportunity at 158. Then right here again at one o'clock, uh, 158 again. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the stock to go short. It's it, on the sticky note, was an early idea of mine, uh, positive on the day. And to be honest with you, pretty happy with the way I traded it. So yeah, nothing wrong with Tesla today. Could always be better, but I, I, I'm cool with it. Yeah, before we get to Tesla, Apple in 20 cents, 10 cents. 10 cents is about to break the local high. Maybe even like 8 cents is about to break Apple? the local high here. It's not VWAP, but 169.80 is that local I top. We I just happened to be short this thing when Powell was talking. And I had a bit at the low of the day. I was in the bathroom and it just hit. 
like, oh, it hit as I was coming back in, but it's about to give this up. And I think it gets to VWAP if it breaks this. And I think I would look at VWAP for fate. For Tesla, what's weird about it is it was good, but after about, what was it 939? It just put in higher lows after that. So like the initial shorts were good, but then every single one was a little bit more shallow. And then each time I got into it, it was like tight stops, uh, profit, then back out, scalp some, and then back out. It's under VWAP now. So I feel like it can be a shortable stock if the market tries to take out the highs and it never gets anywhere into VWAP. I think Tesla could still be a little something. Obviously we know that it, we talked about this breaking down on the daily. So there's it breaking under the daily and it's just nowhere near that 160 level. And I'm thinking shorts under 160 had been for quite some time. Uh, Tisha's saying she's covering that WISA. But I haven't looked at that stock. Okay, that's not true. I looked at that WISA, but not much in small caps outside of Peloton, which I'm in. Uh, we traded some of that this morning. All right, let's uh, continue along here. I mean, there's there was so much in chip land to start things off this morning. A lot of analysts with opinions. We were touching on the uh, Intel angle, um, Intel first, and then, I mean, the same analysts had the same opinions about all of these, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, Intel had its own story in that it's going to develop and come up with um, a Chinese-friendly chip to get around these uh, U.S. regulations that uh, the U.S. government came out with to prevent AMD and NVIDIA, let's be honest, yeah. uh, to sending theirs over to China. Yeah, and it's an AI-specific chip, too, which is good. And they're coming at it from the CPU angle rather than the GPU. It's kind of funny you mentioned this uh, on the morning show already because China was starting to restrict a lot of the AMD and Intel chips with respect to their telecom sector, and now we have this response. So it was a good day uh, today for both names. We'll have to see how they do the rest of the week, Brenda. Latest comment from Powell. What? <sighs> Told can uh, Canada to export more comedians to the U.S. Really? <laughs> okay. Well, hold on. See, first of all, that was like ten minutes. That was like ten minutes ago. And I, what does that even mean? And the thing about it is, he gets asked a question about like he he's not gonna comment on trade policy, right? So someone asked him about trade policy. So in, so he makes a joke instead of saying something useless or just giving us some nonsense talking point that you know we can't say anything constructive on it. So he makes a joke. I actually think that's pretty cool. Right? Like, rather than try and rattle off right. some two-minute winded answer, which will tell people nothing because he's not allowed to talk about it, he actually just makes a joke. So I, I'll give him credit for that. Oh, market just broke higher. But higher? Like, Palantir. Palantir. Oh, yeah, Disney is rocking. Pan W. And shout out to, shout out to this and because I wasn't even looking at this, uh, but I just got put in the chat by Renata, breaking out 275. That's a nice level and key level break. I actually think this is worth... Like buying any kind of a dip, but like what a move! Like, the, did he just shut up or something? Because we just spiked up in the market. Thank goodness we just got of Apple. Apple's at 170 already and continuing to climb. Uh, what were we supposed to be talking about? The chips. I'm gonna assume Nvidia is breaking the hot. Yep, there you go. Nvidia is breaking the high of the day. Maybe we look for a VWAP retracement. Uh, we're going streaking through the quad, and that means we're racing higher and higher. Um, yeah, good reference there. We are um, absolutely mooning again on a name where you might have thought, hey, what are we doing with Disney? There goes Disney pulls back into VWAP and we say thank you so much and Disney going back up to the upside. So uh, here we go again and again and again. I mean, you know, stay with the process. This is what we're talking about. When trades come in, you make them. This is a good one, hopefully, for Disney. Let's see if it continues to go to the upside. We just have that small 10% left. Good trade there for Disney. What are you saying? Intel was, a, I don't know. I don't, I don't hear anything. I have Benzing up right now. I don't hear anything. Uh, there goes Intel. And this is how you stay positive and you try to, like, you know, be part of it. Obviously, we get out and it goes back down. Okay? But if you block out and can't see, like, from here over, you don't know if this is this or if it is this. So that's why you stick with the process and you keep doing the same thing over and over again because you know it's profitable. So there it is, there it is, and then we had our 10% left and there's the out once we break above whatever level that was, 36, 35. 
So there it was. That's the level there. We gave it a couple pennies. You know, kept coming in lower, lower, lower. Eventually breaks. And like we mentioned, this is how uh, you stay in your lane. I forgot to mention shit. Like I didn't say anything about yeah, yeah. that was my bad. What? But what? No, because the market was breaking out. So oh, I Tesla? kind of like no. I was gonna say something about the chip, um, because. Let me look. Let me look down. Oh, I didn't trade AMD today. Okay, I was about to say one for four on chips. I was actually one for three on the chips today. I didn't trade any AMD, it, but it was one for four because I shorted Intel down here, took the hit. Shorted Intel down here, took the hit. We saw shorted, AMD. Oh, Intel. Yeah, yeah. I didn't trade AMD. I was going to talk about AMD next. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then shorted it. Micron and took the hit, and then had one long trade on on Nvidia, which made up for all of them. But the one thing that I haven't traded today, and which so AMD's been relatively strong. It's up two percent. The market's going, it feels like like 165 on a break for AMD. Like look at 165. Okay, fine, you guys can all see it. I don't have to really yell about it. Uh, so three days in a row, kind of, because yesterday 164. But if we bust out this and the market, which was doing nothing, and then Powell, actually I thought it was kind of hawkish. Uh, it's dovish, I should say, but it is what it is. If we break out 165, I think this has some room to rally. But it's still cresting, still trying to get to that top. I do like what I'm seeing with that Pan W, but I'd have to look for a pullback on Palo Alto. There's been a lot of things which are squeezing. We're headed for 18,000 on the futures, and what a reversal uh, in some of these chip names. But that 165, still a chance to go. I think it's more of a break trade on AMD if we get there. Apple's now at VWAP. That was fast. Again, like you can try to hold it to VWAP, but that could just be a separate trade. Like if I'm holding on to that trade instead of taking like a 25 cent hit, you're now sitting like what? What would that be? Like 80 cents out of the money, and uh, they stop talking, and then all of a sudden this sucker uh, just starts going. Or maybe. <laughs> uh, we're just reading a couple of things on uh, Tesla to be aware of. We talked about it already, but. Um, apparently, the company has removed all inventory discounts for all vehicles, all vehicle models in the U.S. So excess inventory, typically they provide a discount, but uh, apparently they've removed all of those from their website. It's the first time since 2022 that Tesla's done that. Um, you were noting something on the uh, Cybertruck, too. Yeah, it looks as if Tesla is delaying the delivery of certain Cybertrucks, reports certain users. Here's what's being said. Uh, Tesla pushed back the scheduled delivery date for the stainless steel pickup without giving a reason. They also didn't say how many buyers were affected, and they didn't respond to requests to comment from the Dow Jones. So uh, it doesn't look like it's affecting it at the moment, Brendo. Nice uh, move up recovery here off the bottoms for Tesla. Yeah, move up with the uh, overall market, I guess, here. Um... 157, thank you. Uh, all right, let's go to DJT, uh, another down day here. We're all the way down to $23. Video. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we. I sure. think the guys touched on that, but uh, I mean, there was, there was analyst moves really on, on NVIDIA and AMD. I don't know, did you have anything else? Uh, for NVIDIA? Yeah. Uh, not specifically for NVIDIA, Brendo, but uh, AMD obviously had a, a couple of analyst upgrades today, getting the nod from uh, several different uh, uh, several different rating agencies, Morgan, uh, sorry, um, I believe it was uh, Morgan Stanley or Piper Sandler in the morning. I don't have it at the moment, Brendo, so. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, as we said, it was, it was analyst moves. They were all positive, even Intel included in on that. They were all positive, increasing the price targets. Um, I mean, as far as DJT, it wasn't anything significant either. It was just um, more negativity. On top of what happened yesterday in the pre-market, we had that huge flush on that uh, note that they filed to potentially offer more shares for DJT, guys. Yeah. I think you want to talk about chips. Yeah, I was going to say NVIDIA because we are, we're just waiting for this one. This is going to be my, actually, AM, actually AMD and NVIDIA are basically tied uh, for my top P&Ls today. And again, I talked about this with a few of the guys there uh, after the show was over about this particular NVIDIA trade. And it was just about having the idea of being short in and around 875, giving it a couple outs, taking hits, waiting for it to start to come back down, as you could see right there, and then take it and break it all the way down there for your trade of the day and an $8 winner. So that's that move uh, all the way back in. From the high of the day into the 200 period, uh, we, we had this live, we talked about it live, we went through this trade together. So, I mean, NVIDIA, close to my number one PL name on the day. 
but that belongs to AMD. Uh, you know, we wrote down this. I mean, whoever thinks of 164, I mean, it is, and that, that's what sparked it, uh, was how the hell do you pick these levels? And I just told them, like, you, you look at it, you do your work, like right into here, 164. You see that it can get to 164.50, 165, but you got to stick your neck out sometimes and take the trade. So AMD was really pretty easy today. Uh, we did get that one break there, went to 165.60, and we just kind of broke again. But I'm not on the short right now. I was kind of just chilling right here, to be honest with you. I, I didn't even, should have came over here and looked at that. But anyways, AMD and NVIDIA, P&L 1 and 2 today for Trader TV Live. Anything on DJT? I didn't trade. No, DJT stinks, DJT. I mean, what are you going to do? Like, it was bad yesterday. What? I mean, it's down 13%. Am I supposed to? Truth's chuckling when I said that. But what, am I, what are we supposed to say about the stock? I didn't short it today. Should have shorted it today. Okay, how about that? We shorted the first available pop and made this trade. And in retrospect and utter hindsight, if you just did the exact same thing and shorted the first available pop, it goes right into VWAP wow. and then falls again. So this has been an absolute dog. The, one I, the two that I traded, oddly enough, in this sort of realm were Pack W and I don't even, uh, sorry, Pack B. So you know what, I'm just gonna, no, no, nobody's gonna get this, but I'm gonna say rhetorically, Pack B is $1.50 and it was an SSR bounce today. Like it was down 44%, they get some, uh, some revised numbers that were not good, obviously. But nobody here is going to be able to guess what Kathy Wood's cost base is, is this in, in, in the ARC um, holdings. Her cost base is $19.84. And I'm all for like having a reason to believe in something. And I'm all for having a long-term outlook. But I actually, like this one, I, I, I don't get this. I can understand you think that Bitcoin's going to whatever number she said recently. I can understand that you think Tesla, it's an AI play and it can still go whatever X. I'm a half a believer in that as well, maybe not as extreme. But I don't actually understand how you could be long something like this here and now it's at $1.50 and you're still holding on to it. If you're an active manager, I'm very, very curious and I don't really, like it's, if you know something I don't, Aunt, Aunt Kathy, then maybe I should buy it at a dollar. Because if you still think it's yeah. good, you hold it at 20, like what are, like what is this sitting on that's worth holding onto it going to the OTC at some point. Uh, we have a... That's the only thing. Anyways, um, I wanted to go what back. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Apple fine. just... Like, that whole move just reversed I just went back. long on AMD because... We just pulled back a dollar on Apple. I I'm know. not in it, but... But think about, okay, so I was going to go... Let's talk a little bit about trading now, okay, because, you know, we're here. What the hell? Um, I was going to go long, so on this pullback in now... Look, I'm still not very bullish. You guys know. I mean, hey, what's up, guys? I'm me. I'm still not super bullish on this market. But we're above VWAP, so I'm going to stay true to what we're doing right now, and that is looking at trades going long through VWAP. So AMD right now um, made that dip in. Let's get a piece out at 50 if we can. So I just want to go over stock selection. I was going to choose Apple, and Apple might be right. I don't know. I'm just running through what I was thinking. Apple's down on the day, but it ran back basically into the 200 and into the 50. So that's different than AMD running back into VWAP. I, I, you know, AMD's up on the day, so if we can get this, and the thing about AMD is it's a lot more like volatile, I guess, or does its own thing. So we could break through 163, and if we do, I'm going to be out. Okay, so we'll try this. Normally, I'd be looking to get out now because we're, we're, we're kind of breaching VWAP, but if the market can somewhat hold, which it's not looking like it wants to, uh, we're going to try this long one more time. So again, this was P&L number one, uh, but after this, it most likely will not be, but we are not, you know, averaging in too much into this, man. Like a 162, 90 break, something like that. We're gone. Right now, long AMD, uh, Neil still uh, Peloton. So, okay, let's I go. I actually got lucky because I reloaded it at the same price and then that mar like the market just kind of reversed and it got back under yeah. VWAP. But I've essentially just been shorting this at three, in front of 315 and then looking for the push down into three. It was not, it was actually strong just now and then the market turned right back around. So I don't know if that was a trap. I didn't really hear anything hit the wire. The drop or anything crazy. Uh, smoking ban passed by parliament, BTI on the move. Smoking but let's go back ban. to the desk because we're supposed to talk about banks too. 
Uh, just reading a note. I don't see anything new either, guys. But yeah, pretty volatile here this afternoon. Uh, just reading a note on uh, Amazon. Apparently, they have more than 180 million, 180 million Prime Real. members in the U.S. now. So more than 50% uh, of the U.S. population has a Prime membership. Crazy. Um, let's talk some banks here to wrap things up. It was uh, Morgan Stanley Day and BAC that came out uh, this morning in the pre-market. Um, still holding on to a pretty good day here for uh, Morgan, uh, given what happened in the overall market. It was, um, yeah, ugly for BAC on the other side yeah. of things. Uh, look, BAC beat expectations, but everything was down year over year. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, their profit fell 18% uh, year over year on the quarter. Revenue also slipped 1.6% year over year. Despite the fact, again, they beat analyst estimates, they're down year over year. It wasn't that way for Morgan Stanley. They did much, much better. Profit rose 14%. Revenue rose 4%. Their wealth management division absolutely knocked it out of the park. So did trading and investment banking, all exceeding expectations, Brenda. Yeah, we saw on that um, sector board, the uh, S&P board, and we came on at 2 o'clock. It was uh, basically Morgan was the only one. Um, still holding on to a pretty good day, guys. Any opportunities here this morning? Just sell my money. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll just hit a fail right there. We'll hit the siren alert and uh, the fail because AMD broke. So, again... It's now it's PL2. NVIDIA still held out there, but we had talked about this as a potential breaking spot here. Um, there goes AMD to the downside. Both Neil and I just said, like, what just happened? I mean, that seemed pretty aggressive now. I mean, this is the NASDAQ. We have Powell. I have been zinging in my ear. I'm not hearing anything. I heard something about that smoking ban. Uh, but unless it's a smoking gun for AMD or the NASDAQ, I don't think that has anything to do with anything. Uh, but right now, now to the downside. I think it was Philip Morris and stuff like that. I don't know what that smoking, I don't know what that is. But uh, nice move down there on AMD, breaking, breaking the low, uh, or sorry, breaking view up, which is what we were trusting there. So, all right, we trust the process, but that one sort of backfired on us a little bit. A little bit of an L there. We gave back 5% of our day. You know what, if we hold red, AMC's up 13%. It's like the first place my mind just went to. If this is gonna rug pull after what it looked like an afternoon break, I mean, okay, let me double check. I should do my diligence. Is GameStop better? Maybe. What is Apple doing then? Okay, yeah. We should be short. I'm just like, if it's, this is a reversal, uh, like, what's the thing that was up that shouldn't have been that was, it might be like GameStop. Okay, yeah, maybe GameStop looks better of a setup here now uh, than AMC. Yeah, if we, we, have, if, we have to go to Brendan here. Oh, we're gonna, Brendan, sorry. Well, what happened? Uh, just real quick, guys, just seeing a comment here. Fed's Powell saying restrictive policy needs more time to work. Uh, so we're having uh, communication issues with the production all good. because there's no mic there. It's all good. Oh, man, that's... We're setting up the room, so there's some stuff Oh, happening. that makes that I make guess, more sense. I'm guessing. Uh, no, I saw Fabian walking. Um, yeah, okay, so there it is. So there is a Fed Powell thing there. All right, well, I'm going to go... One more time into AMD. So 162. Uh, what was that low there? I just don't remember what I said about all this Fugue's Fed speak. I, I really do believe that. Uh, 162.74. And what I mean by that is, is like, look, I could lose on it. I mean, it is. If I lose on it, I lose on it. But it's just, I feel that we already know what the Fed is going to do. Like, um, and I mean, if they're going to be data dependent, which they've already said they're going to be, then who really cares what they're saying? We need to see the data, and then we need to depend on it. So if that's what we're oh, doing, that's what, it means. that's what it means, I thought. So I'm not, we're not worried then about what Barkin has to say. Obviously, when the big man uh, comes and, and says something, we should definitely pick up that phone. But at the end of the day... Um, you know, I'm pretty, pretty chill just doing what we're doing right now um, and continuously watching, trying to play stronger names that we believe are strong, that dip into levels um, that we want to support. So we'll try it one more time here with AMD. You know, like I said, we didn't really give that much back. We were just 10 cents in the money there. I don't even have offers out uh, until the teens. So let's see what happens here with AMD. We're going to give it to that low of 75. 75 break, we're out. And, I, and I'd be fine with that. This is not going to be an average in or anything. Let's just see what happens here with AMD. Not a huge position. Looks like we, we're, we're going to be wrong here. We can easily, easily 
just regroup. Let's just see what happens. Here it comes in. So we're about 10 cents away now from getting stopped out. And it looks like we will get stopped out this one last time. This was not a, a lot of shares. This was just like, ah, let's just see what happens once we heard that Brendan story. So here it comes. See, like right there. We were just almost stopped out right back to flat again. So yeah, um, I don't know. Well, let's just hold this and see if it can work up into the teens uh, here with AMD. Although it looks like we can only get to 06. Let's take a piece out here at 06 cancel our teens, and then see if we can get it uh, a little higher than that. Take a dime and then go higher. All right, so I just paid... Did I just drop something? No. Uh, I just paid for locates on both GameStop and uh, AMC for the shockingly low price of one-eighth of one cent per share. One so if we're doing this one, kind of... One-eighth of one cent? Yes. One-eighth? Like, oh, wow. like, it's very cheap. So basically, like, you're paying 12 cents to short 100 shares. Yeah, right. okay. um, but that said, like we're you know real trading is day trading, so the like, the rates uh, to get locates are obviously different than if you are holding them overnight. Uh, so if the market's doing this whipsaw back and forth, it's not making a lot of sense. How about trading some things that if we are going to flush, I feel like are overheated, but just fall into a different basket where they might not care. So AMC. That's not low. Let's go to the 15 minute go here. Show AMC me. is like turning at a resistance level anyways, right? Like it wicked this top. So if it's going to fail out in front of 290, then I'll short it in the mid 80s. And the same thing with GameStop. Um, this one is actually at yesterday's resistance and putting in a lower high. So I'm going to try and get whichever one. Oh. I'm already in Peloton and we'll see what happens there. I wanted to get Pan W. That didn't get yes, the VWAP uh, at all. But I'm going to take a shot at some of these small cappers, which were probably overdone to begin with. Yeah, it was the chat that was talking about there, Pan W. All right, we, we'll come close to making it back right now. We still need to get a little bit more going, though, um, on AMD. So I just hope that talk there made, again, this is what we talk about. Like, I'm just trying to go through my thought process and then say it out loud and see if it works. <laughs> this time it did. Uh, right now, there it is, a nice move up for AM, uh, AMD. We just got out at 19s there a little bit. We still are holding 60%, looking for higher. That's 43s. I'm actually there at 40. So let's, 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 put it, um, let's put it at 30 there, like we said. It's just going up and down. I'd hate, hate to miss that, but here we go. We'll see if we can get up there. And if it drops back in through there, then we will get out because look at the market. The market just broke back above. So again, here in the afternoon, I think it's worth the shot of that happening right back up. So that's, that's why we sat there and did that. You know, the chance that this could happen again in the afternoon, like a retracement right back up. Okay, so that's kind of... Again, everyone's going to have different styles. We talked about that. And I've already scalped out 40%. I'm trying to do like a combo style. You know, try to hold something in case what we think could happen. And then at the same time, if it starts hitting, which we might get stopped out, if it starts hitting some of our levels like the 50 period, like VWAP, then we decide to get out like right here. You know, it looks the same as the futures, right? Like the 50 period, like VWAP. So here we go. The, you know, we're, we're going to be here for that move. If it continues down, we have a stop. We've taken out, uh-oh, we've taken out some profit, and we have our stop, and it's going to trigger on an 80 break, and that was close enough. So right here, that'll probably trigger hands off watch. So there it goes. Uh, wait a second. Oh, nope, sorry, 75 break. I just looked down. We're at 75 uh, right there for a break. So we are almost stopped out. As soon as that happens, I don't even need to change my mind or anything. Um, we will get punched out of that automatically. So here comes the market right back in. Looks like it could be a fun afternoon, Neil. It might be. I, you know who Combo Panda is, right? Um, Penn and Teller, yes. Combo. No, Combo Panda. Yep. Combo Panda? Anyways, you said like it's a con Is he a rapper? No, it's like this. I have no idea. Okay, then maybe your kids are too. Because it's go Combo Panda is like this. Um, I know, Kung Fu Panda. It's like a game. It's like this gaming channel on YouTube. Oh, no. And they, no. they stream themselves playing game. But, like the, but it's not an actual person. It's like this panda, panda character. My daughter's into it. Anyway, so when you said Combo Panda, combo, I'm like, Combo Panda, let's go. Oh, I'm short AMC. Yeah, I, know that one. I want GME as not well. Bad. Like the market looks like it's trying to get back, but I'd rather, like I said, I'd rather take a shot on like a setup that's just, hey, you're squeezing, you wick the high. If you pull back to VWAP, we'll get it right. at 80 and see if this one can flush. Short now. I'm already in Peloton. I just looked over at Tesla, and Tesla's back under VWAP here. Let me zoom back in because we don't, yeah, Tesla's back under VWAP, 
And I just feel like if, if everything started with Tesla is a short, then we can go back to that well and give it to just above VWAP. If there's any kind of a, just give me one little whipsaw and just give us a shot to short this one back into VWAP. I'll take it. Oh, I just got GameStop as well at 31s. That local high is just above 40. So let's take a shot at a couple of these there. Uh, yeah, Ryan's World. Yeah, that's my jam, man. We bought Ryan's World toys and everything. I think they're like, I think they're adjacent. Like, I think they, I think they do stuff together. Yeah, because probably. You know who my family, my, that's who my daughter, daughter likes? My daughter loves Ryan's World. Salish. Salish Matter and Jordan Matter. I know, the for, I know the former. I'm not sure if I know the... Yeah, Jordan Matter is the dad. He used to do all this okay. stuff. And I'm just like, man, this guy has lost his damn mind. But, I mean, uh, funny yeah. stuff. I mean, that's, you know, to each yeah, their own. exactly. It's, it's I mean, just it's good stuff the at the end of the day. Um, yeah, fun stuff. What else? YouTube. Um, all right, so we did get stopped out there of AMD. I mean, honestly, I don't know. We're, we fail on it because it was a flat trade. Honestly. I mean, we got that. That's why we did that. It was stopped out. Maybe we might have lost ten bucks or something there. That that was, you know, that was not a big deal. When you punch out, you do pay the fee. So I could see myself losing there somewhere, but um, not a big deal on that trade. And so far, so good here um, for the day. So we've been pretty good here, uh, watching our trading and, and being able to monitor some of these trades. So. We'll stay in it. We do have an LFT. I mean, our loss was Nvidia, was uh, AMD there. So look at Tesla. I mean, this, this name right here, I was just looking at this. This is at a bottom as well, but I want to go short now. So we're, we're trying to just to do what we've been doing. Market underneath. So market's underneath, sure. It's trying to battle back. You watch. That AMD is probably going to turn out to be a winner, but I'm not doing what I normally do by going back into it. Um, we need to find something to short. So Apple is the first thing that goes to my mind when we're thinking about shorting names. I mean, there's probably a lot of names that are way uh, lower than this. Ethereum's actually down 3%. Bitcoin down here to 62. We want to look at Bitcoin 61. So if that comes into play, that would be something as well. Over VWAP, it's kind of... Yeah, I was going to say this Apple 169.50-ish is a jam that I could get behind. That's why I went to the retracement on some of the small caps because like they both came into like, GameStop and GME. They both came into levels, but I'm looking at iBit here. Like if you like the short, it's actually higher lows over an iBit. Uh, I was looking at uh, Mara, Coinbase, that didn't set up. Tesla AMD's VWAP, back. like Tesla VWAP could be a bit of a thing. But if it doesn't break this low, like to me, like you're shorting VWAP, but you're not giving it to the high of the day. Like that's, it's a tight stop in here to short. And if it breaks out, you got to wait for 158. So if it, if it breaks above 156 and a half, like you get one short and then you're waiting a dollar to a dollar 50, getting out of that one for an L and then waiting a dollar to a dollar 50 to put on a different short. But I like the consolidation under VWAP as a setup, but I don't want to take the break down trade. You just said, I mean, Apple I was looking at as well, but uh, I mean, the problem with short Apple here is like you just had the turn at VWAP. What am I going to short the low of the day? Like yikes. This has to almost come up here and give us a chance. I was in the short, and it could have just held it to view up, and it would have worked. Uh, yeah. That's a little bit frustrating, because when you, if you would have done something undisciplined, and it's like, yeah, it could have blindly worked, it, the market looked like a long at that point, so I got out. And if I had, hadn't, it would have been OK. Uh, NVIDIA may be worth a shot, but that still looks a little bit strong. If anything, NVIDIA is sort of telling you, give it a shot off of VWAP for a long play. So yeah, I think just be patient here, because I'm not really seeing anything that's overwhelming or obvious as the AMC is still exactly flat. I mean, it's now going sideways. Like, it consolidated here off some lower highs. Not really. The, the, the fact that it's lowering in volume, I always think is particularly good when it started pulling back, because that means you can get that quick little flush into view up. If you've got any small cappers that are going, let me know, because I think those could get interesting this afternoon if we're just going to sit around range bound. Like, all that activity when you get Powell talking, if we end up just not doing anything for the rest of the afternoon, I think we need to take that old chill pill. I still want Tesla under VWAP, but after that, Apple's a dollar away from resistance. Can't really short here yet. Yeah, we just missed. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with all of that. I okay. mean, I, I really feel like, uh, who was it there? Yeah, no trade is a trade. Yeah, I mean, you guys are right. It's, uh, thank you, Y Brothers United. You like the risk management. I mean, Got to. That's Excellent. why we talk about that, man. Uh, thank you, uh, Turin Termabar. 
uh, you, ad thank you, Sean. You adapt so fast. That's what makes you a good trader. Thank Karen. you. It's okay. Uh, someone said that. Oh, here it is. This is. I, I agree with this. Probably Jay Lee. Holy sh Sean is here. Uh, wow. Um, Jay Lee, I was just going to tell you this. It was the right play, just the wrong entry. Look where we are. Thank you, Adara. Look where we are right now on AMD. Like we just talked about that. And I was just going to say, like, I, I put another bit in there to get long again, and we missed it. Oh, man. What the heck? Oh. Okay, but look at that move. That's the move we wanted, right? Uh, we did get stopped out by about, about five pennies. That's too bad. Uh, but that's, that's what it is. You know, what did I do we've already that? done this. I want to say thank you as well um, to all 50. First of all, the walk and talk from today, already 2,000 views. Um, and it's just here on X. So I want to thank everybody for that. I want to thank everybody for this. 54,000 views, 198 likes on this new mentality of trading. Thank you so much to everybody for that. Uh, it's really been a change of um, everything for me and it's made a big, big difference uh, in everything. Uh, look, look what just happened right there. You know, as we battle with AMD, you know, pick your poison. We've actually, we're actually up more now on Disney than we are on AMD. And this is one trade on Disney, and we could have had it again, as opposed to all of this. Well, I mean, AMD wasn't too bad, but we, we wind up throwing money back on this. So we could have just gone over and focused on this um, and left Disney. Oh, but the thing is, is like, honestly, AMD is fine. I'm fine with this call. I just had the wrong, I got, I got taken out. Uh, which is me. So that's that's what I do that's there. That's just but, trading. I mean, um, yeah, that's trading, and I'm fine with that. And Derek got me wired. Can take a drink. Uh, Roblox apparently just went Havana Woody. What did I do? I love Neil till he trades against me. But like what? I, Havana Woody, you're not long GameStop and AMC. I don't think. Uh, and Tesla, I've, Tesla's more of like a scalp trade than anything else. No, it's like actually, there's been a few times where you go one way. And both traders, like if it goes range bound, like both sides of it can work. Like if you were, let's just imagine you're long. I don't know if you are. Let's imagine you're long Tesla off this support at 155 and a half. And the range is a dollar and the top here is 156 and a half. Well, then in theory, you could make a dollar. I can short here at 25 with a stop above 50. It could come back down, bounce off the low again. And then we just do this a couple of times and then both the longs and the shorts have won. And eventually it breaks one way and then one person get like one direction, you get to hold it and it trends. But yeah, it's just, you're just trading. I mean, you're just trading your own book, your own range. I mean, it could easily work either way. Maybe you well, are. It, no, let's, it's maybe like you what are you said longing. before about going five for five on a day or Ooh. six and four, right? It's like you could be, we could be wrong. Like someone could have been short. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. You could have been short AMD there against my long and still wound up winning. Where did, where did he come from? I mean, no. I, I don't know. It's like, no, I know. I know. It's, it's like great service. It's like, we're like, what? Okay, Randy. Randy just comes out of nowhere. Uh, I, I mean, I did ask Adara for the water, but I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll take the coffee. Oh, Havana Woody says, I crapped on Prozo's Friday. Did I say bad things about PRZO on Friday? I mean, I don't remember I, doing I, I that. I tend to think that we don't really say anything bad about specific stocks other than trade ideas, which could turn out oh, to be bad. Oh, no, all, you know Does what? I mean a bad trade? No, no, first of all, I, I remember this. I don't know. No, I remember, look, Prozo was that dollar... Like, it was the dollar fail. Remember Jozo? On Friday. I remember Jozo. <laughs> like, it broke a dollar. No, it, was, it broke a dollar, but the spread on the stock was, like, the volume wasn't very good. The spread was too big for a penny stock. So I'm like, ah, I don't think that's very tradable. Because when I look at, like, I want a penny stock to look like Nikola. It's a 90-cent stock with a one-and-a-half cent spread. Like, one-and-a-half cent. It doesn't seem like a lot. But then imagine a $90 stock had a dollar and a half cent spread. And then asking me if you'd want to trade that $90 stock. That's all I was getting at with PRZO. But if you're swinging it, you can probably trade these just fine, just differently from how, how like any of us would even consider it. So, you know, to each their own there. I wasn't really, I didn't think I was crapping on PRZO at all. And in fact, I don't think I traded it at all. I was just sort of saying there's a... There's like a no-fly zone for day traders in terms of like the amount of liquidity you'll find in a stock or how much volume it'll do, where you just won't trade it because there's just nothing you can do with it once it goes. Uh, so Tesla went a whopping 20 cents in the money and is now not even moving. As I said, it looks like we're just going to have to chill here at this particular point. Uh, Olavio in the chat, we are not trading options. We are trading the equity. Like everything, we, everything you see as trade, if you see a ticker up there, we're just trading the stock, not the options. Obviously, they'll 
tend to move in tandem. I think that goes without saying, but yeah, we're just trading the equity here. Uh, Apple, nowhere near VWAP, so we will once again chill. Uh, Peloton not moving. GameStop, AMC not doing anything. NVIDIA was a good bounce off VWAP if I was a little. Uh, there's an also a good opportunity, what, that for the upside? I think NVIDIA is probably a much better long. It's, a, it's the stronger looking. Yeah, I, I think this one for a long looks a little bit better. Although, let me double check AMD again. Well, I was no, just going to mention VWAP. AMD yeah. just. At VWAP, one's above. I'm still a little bit, uh, damn it. But I don't I'm almost shit. shorting this. Isn't it not better to be short into, into the afternoon? I don't know. I mean, Don't we have Frank in five minutes? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, that's... Wait a minute. I don't believe in that Frank stuff. Uh, but, so. but, I'm not, this is not... Look. All right. I mean, it's pretty simple here. You don't need to always be in a trade. No, you don't. Okay. I have Disney. We're 30 cents in the money. We had AMD which would be like a 50 cent winner. We got out, went five cents lower than where we got out, then it went back up. This is a choppy market. You know, there's gonna be a point where the trend becomes a little bit more obvious and then we can have some of these winners. But until then, why am I going to like try to pretend that I know this market's just gonna wick up here and then come right back down and then wick down here again when I'm just gonna be looking for trades in the middle and then most likely just get stopped out both ways. We can wait for a dramatic move one way or the other in something, which is why, I mean, which is why I'm more upset for myself of missing this Disney because we had the long, we put it into PL number two for us today, and then it came right back and said Merry Christmas, and then just like the Scrooge or whatever there um, from Grinch. Disney. The Grinch. The Grinch, I don't think, is Disney, is it? No. Yeah, isn't Something it? Something about Scrooge Mc, Mc, oh, okay. Duff there, or whatever okay. his name is there. Uh, Christmas Story. What's the oh, guy? Christmas uh, Carol. Yeah, Christmas Carol. I actually like the Bill Murray one the best. Bill Murray is honestly. Like, I know he's old and maybe even, you know, more, you know, Stripes. out there now. But, yeah, no. Uh, Caddy Shack. Caddy, I was going to say Caddy okay, Shack. Here's, okay. We just talked about here's Ghost, a question for Ghostbusters. You. Okay, now you got to pick. Ghostbusters, Caddy Shack, or Stripes. Best I would pick Murray Ghostbusters movie. just because I really like – Ghostbusters is just something that I watched growing up. Like, Caddy Shack was there as well. A little bit older, but – I'm going to guess – uh, I say Ghostbusters too because I know I only look 25, right? Was, but I was watching the original Ghostbusters. One. Given our age, that's the one. But Caddyshack, I'm gonna guess most hmm. people would say Caddyshack. I mean, Caddyshack also had Chevy Chase, um, which was quite amazing. I really like that guy too. So I, I he's think, hilarious. Apparently, but Dan Aykroyd was in Ghostbusters. Apparently, they I'm came sticking to, you know with they came Ghostbusters. To fists, apparently, like there's a whole story. Oh, yeah? There's a story about Bill Murray and Chevy Chase, which is surprising because they were so freaking hilarious together. But uh, apparently, Chevy Chase doesn't doesn't play. Scrooge's DuckTales. There you go. Thank you, Kevin. Who doesn't play? No, Chevy, Chevy Chase. No, that guy's a big dude, too, man. I would not well, be... He's I a not big boy. around with... Uh, big boy. Uh, but yeah, Caddyshack. I mean, I'm a golfer, too. I, I mean, I'm, I'm down with Caddyshack, man. Gra Honestly, Groundhog Day, I didn't even think about it. Do you guys ever reverse trade out of positions, okay. Kyle W? Yes, when the trade warrants it. But I think you have to... If you're going to reverse a trade that goes against you and you go from a I short to a long or long to short, like, that should be part of your plan. Like, you know, okay, at this level, I think I take it in both directions. Like, I short it to this, but if it breaks, I'll get out. Like, I'll give the example here. Like, I don't necessarily, like, I could flip Tesla if it breaks out 156.50, but I'm not thinking that. Like, I'm, I've been bearish on Tesla today. I'm not really thinking the long if it goes through. If we were at a really key price, maybe I would have a difference of opinion. But to me, it's just an out. If I, if, I flip, if I don't flip long and it goes to 158, then so be it. But I think you got to have a plan of action. Otherwise, you're just going to see every key level as you, I was short, then I'm long, then I'm short, then I'm long. And any trader I've ever seen doing that, and there's actually one that comes to mind. I remember he was a trainee. And um, his very first day live, you'll remember this guy. Uh, his very first day trading live, he was trading, I think it was General Electric, and it was doing... It's 9.30, so everything's going crazy. And he's just flipping long to short, scalping every, every single move. And he's like, bang, five cents, bang, 10 cents. And he's, and he's actually yelling this out loud while he's doing it, which is kind of weird. And then after a few wins, he's like, boom, I'm made for this. Now the opening flush where it goes back and forth stops, and then it starts trending in one direction, and he was shut down in like the next five minutes. It was like 9.45 and he got shut down. 
So yeah. like you can you have to be careful if you're just flipping back and forth because once it starts trending on you, you're just going to be caught wrong and that game of being able to flip directions is going to end really quickly for you. I don't believe in it. I think you have to really pick your spots. He's a good dude. That guy was delusional. He made a bet one time about how much he weighed where he's like, I weigh 175 pounds. The kid weighed 140 soaking wet. And he was very unselfish. I think I brought in a scale. 100%. Sean then, brings in the scale because we're like, dude, actually it was just important for us to go over this because he, like, you just, can't be that delusional. Like, that's a problem. Like, he was legitimately 140 pounds. He's like, no, I'm 175. I'm like, no, we're bringing in a scale so you can lose this bet. So you can actually have a better perception of reality. Point. Yeah, exactly. He was a good kid, but I mean, apparently, they, yeah, they did have a beef maybe on Saturday Night Live, says Jazzy J. There. Yeah, I, we'll see. I saw a video about um, it. Um, all right, uh, all right. So we could just keep on going. If you guys want us to talk about any sort of a stock, uh, you know, we're here for that as well. Tesla went two Tilray cents is from not that suspended. Stock. What does that mean? Is Tilray halted? Um, no. I have so, a halt scanner up. Yeah, just I mean, so. Yeah, we have the whoopsies. We have the Benzinga newswire as well, so we'll be able to, uh, if anything hits, they tell us immediately in our ear. Uh, by the way, the show brought to you by Benzinga, so get the best pro platform here, Benzinga Pro, with all the news. Uh, who's over there, Ramin? There it is. Uh, with all the news, you get to all these sort of breaking stories as they come through. There's also like a live squawk right here that we listen to, Equity and High Beta Squawk, that will give me, which is how we had that Morgan Stanley news, even though that went against us. Oh, and that's how we had the Boeing news, although that went against us. So I feel like it's not, it's not that great for like making um, like instant decisions on because news can sort of take you one way and then the other. And by the way, uh, look at AMD about what we've just been talking about. Like trying to get me to trade, not you guys trying, but like, you know, trying to think about trading this name has left sour taste because it's not doing anything right now. We may have to go over to NVIDIA and have a quick look. Eight, yeah, see? So again, not much happening. I think it's better to have dry powder right now. Sit on your hands a little bit and see if there's any kind of a move. We had Powell come through and talk uh, with uh, Tiff Macklin there in Canada. Was it in Canada? Where was that anyways? You know, actually, I don't know. I have no clue where they were because it was just some conference that they were talking about. Yeah, at. so I, somewhere in the, uh, hard to tell. the Traderverse there, they were talking. And since then we had, it's like, see this? This is the kind of stuff we're waiting for. These moves, if we can get a move like that somewhere again, um, we got stopped out of our intel right there, but it had that move. So if something will happen in this market, then we want to be here to trade it, and that's what I want to do. I'd rather be flat and then react to a move than be in it and have to either get a windfall because we picked the right way or deal with a bad trade. And I don't, right now, we're at the highest level pretty much all day because Disney's trying to go back upside a little bit. Happy with our positions now and willing to sit here we made back about, we made back more than half of what we lost yesterday. So we're, we're really happy with that. And I, I'm actually really, really happy. So all is well, man. Boeing is go. I almost said it there. Like I was almost like Boeing, Boeing is, is going. going. And then I realized like sometimes you say things, it's like, you're like, oh, oh that's funny. But like, you don't really say it on purpose. It's just, oh, so fine. there it goes. Now, if I said, like, Boeing's flying, you know, that's something But that, is it actually... Is it no, actually it's not really doing anything. But Boeing up 1.21%. Seems to be a good trade. I think it's worth looking at now if, again, it comes back into support. So, well, I mean, AMC yeah, and GameStop have stopped going up, but that's, like, literally the only thing that they've done. Like, they're... Like, it's, it's at the key price. It's pulled back. I shorted, like, when it consolidated, and it dropped a couple cents. Now it's back to flat. I'm looking for a pushback into here. Nothing's really happening just yet. Tesla, it might end up being, like, a more of a scalp trade than even I thought, the tight range that it's in. So I'm in GameStop, AMC. We were in ready. Peloton already. Okay, um, I do ready. believe, there it is. It's, it's past 245. I um, forgot they don't have a mic. I know. I forgot, too. So we I actually like, Yo, get the let call. Us know. Hate keeping the man waiting. And I suppose now I should cover some shorts because we've got Frank. Well, I'm long. Caberna. Hey, there he is. Yeah, Frank Caberna back with us for a uh, wrap-up here of what's happened uh, not only today but the past couple of days here, Frank. Um, busy day with lots of comments once again. And this time we get them from 
uh, the uh, big guy himself, uh, Fed Chair Powell, I mean, kind of echoing what we've heard over the past couple of days. Give me your thoughts here. But, uh, you know, the higher for longer, to go back, you know, a year or so ago, that higher for longer statement still echoing in the background here yet again. Yeah, and, and he's come back to it here today, and I don't think it's any um, coincidence that you have 10-year uh, yields now comfortably above 4.5%, two years for a second there, almost got to 5% um, as he was speaking uh, to TIFF. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know if it was in Canada. It looked like uh, it was, it was uh, in it was Canada Washington. there. Well, oh, no, yeah, it was, it was in Washington. Washington. Yeah. yeah, you're exactly right. I have it on the, the slide in front of me. I'm an <laughs> idiot. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, he said a lot of hawkish things, it seemed like. Um, and then at the end, he gave a, a little bit of it back. Um, he's always so even keel. Um, but the, the, the rhetoric that you got at the start of the speech, um, now, you know, uh, close to an hour ago, um, was, yeah, lack of progress on inflation, lacking uh, confidence, needing greater confidence, um, and uh, kind of echoing. The, the recent version of this, uh, Brennan, has been that um, the economy in the U.S. is so strong, and, and he remarked that employment has been so strong, GDP growth has been consistently strong in the U.S., um, that he just seems like he's not in a rush now to cut rates. Um, and now that that continues this kind of uh, um, this golden path or this uh, uh, soft landing, whatever you want to call it, um, that has caused stocks to not necessarily fall out of bed um, because that type of rhetoric means that we're still looking at cuts at some point. Because um, uh, to his point, it's that we're monitoring inflation and we need greater confidence to start cutting. And so he hasn't opened up the Pandora's box of we might not be looking at cuts before hikes um, in the, the next uh, 12 months or so. I'm still confident, it seems, on the fact that they'll be moving lower. Um, but the question of when now is really becoming interesting. Uh, the June rate hike now s seems like it's pretty much off the table. 15% um, when I, I was with you on Thursday of last week. It was 20%. Um, and, and what's really interesting, and, and we can talk about this maybe at the end, I, I don't want to um, uh, muddy the waters too much, um, is that from Thursday until now, we've had an escalation of uh, war in the Middle East and, and what you would expect to uh, send interest rates and treasury yields lower. And so that just lets you know how strong um, the the idea is that's that's right now brewing in the U.S., which is these rate cuts might not be coming uh, here in 2024 because you've got the June uh, rate cut getting priced out. But then you also have here the December projections. And a couple of things are interesting. One, the chance of no rate hikes has gone from 12 percent on Thursday when we talked to now 14 percent. Not a huge rise, but consistently rising. It was 0% a month ago, and now it's 14% of no, 14 chance of no rate cut. Uh, and gosh, I, I got the hike on there again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, 14% chance of no rate cut at all in 2024 here in the US. And what's really interesting to me, uh, Brendan, is look at that curve now. And now you've got close to 50% of the entire distribution here for all of 2024, the rest of the Fed meetings, 50% of the distribution is in one rate cut or no rate cuts. And so this is really changing really quickly. Um, and yeah, I mean, Fed Chair Powell had the opportunity today to kind of backtrack. I, he's watching these markets closer than anybody. And so he could have come out today and, and reiterated, you know, we're still looking at rate cuts at some point this year. Um, but he didn't. And, and that lets me think, and, and the market is is trading this way uh, in reaction, um, that he isn't sold on the fact that we have to rate cut uh, this year. He's gone away from the we're going to cut at some point this year and gone more towards the we're looking for more confidence for those cuts. We're still looking at cuts, 
uh, but we need to be more confident on it. And uh, as of uh, mid-April here, it uh, do- doesn't seem like he has the confidence to do it anytime soon. I think a lot of people are um, kind of scratching their heads on this and asking the simple question of how do we go from such a polarizing start to the year in the opposite direction to yeah. now where we are today? And maybe the the better angle to take here is because we're – you know, we, we seem to be just saying the same thing over and over and over again because that's the the narrative currently that the data itself, as Fetcher Powell keeps alluding to, has not shown them that it's time to start start cutting. So I guess the first question is, how do we go from such a polarizing start to the year in the opposite direction to now where we are today? And then the, the obvious next question would be, so what is it they do need to see? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, th- thankfully, uh, if you watch the speech today or, or you've listened to Powell or even going back to Yellen, they're extremely straightforward and transparent about exactly what they want. And it almost uh, over it seems like too simple um, that uh, he came out today and said inflation was moving lower very, very quickly at the end of 2023. And he was like we, we saw tremendous strides towards the two percent target, and then he said, in the last three to six months, that inflation rate has turned around in the other direction, and we need it to be moving towards two percent again to get those rate cuts that the market priced in six months ago, um, and now in the last six months have priced out effectively. Um, And and so it's that inflation number, man. And he even called it out again. He calls it out every single time. It's like a a running joke at this point. Core PCE. He said, you know, even he didn't even reference actually the CPI that's upticked now two months in a row. Um, And maybe because he knew that if he did bring that up, then you would have really seen interest rates take off. Um, But he did comment directly on core PCE. Is, is not moving lower like we need it to. Now, he didn't say that we need to see 2%. Um, and I actually rewound a couple of times to make sure of this. He said that we need inflation to be moving towards 2%. Uh, and so what's changed is either, uh, if you're looking at core PCE or core CPI, the journey towards 2% has stalled out. And if you're looking at headline inflation numbers, they're upticking. And, and so um, he seems pretty adamant that he's looking directly at that inflation. Um, we don't know if we need 2% or 2.2%. It seems like if we just, uh, between now and say, you know, July, August, September, some of the end of the year FOMC meetings between now and then, if we saw that core inflation number move towards 2.4, or 2.3 or 2.2%, then you might get one or two Uh, or three rate cuts that we can price those back in just as easily as we've priced them out in the last uh, handful of months here. Um, But he he pointed to it directly. Employment is so strong. GDP is so strong. We don't need to cut these rates until we're confident inflation is moving towards 2%. In your experience, have you seen in these cases when, you know, there's, there's these numbers moving in the right direction and then we start to get that, you know, turn back the other way again, Mm -hmm. Is it something that can automatically flip on a diamond and start heading back in the direction they want it to? And I mean, it was 3.8% on that that CPI print. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have been kind of in the background saying that H word. I mean, you had a, a Freudian typo on there, but is it at this point out I, of the yeah. question? I, I don't think it's off the table at all, the potential to move into rate hike territory. now. I think we're 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 a good deal away from that. I think we would need uh, inflation to uptick another two or three months in a row, and and you would need th- that core inflation number that he is is uh, so directly adamant about has not been upticking, um, and so if that turns around, then I think you do have hikes on the table, and you'll see the market start to price the that in. Um, it's not being priced in now, and we still are. A good deal away from that, um, but but part of what makes this so difficult, Brennan, is the inflation that we saw two years ago is the highest inflation that we've seen since the early '80s. And so there's there's really obviously at no point in my trading career have I seen this type of fluctuation 
in inflation. I mean, my whole trading experience is that the central bankers, you know, essentially get paid to, to do nothing because we've been glued to zero percent for like 90 percent of my trading career. Um, and, and so it's really hard to tell. Obviously, from my experience, I have none of, of how quickly um, inflation can resurface here. But I mean, if you go back to the last time that inflation was this high, late 70s, early 80s, inflation spiked up to 10 percent and beyond, came all the way back by the late 70s to around three, four, five percent, and then spiked up to 10 percent and beyond again in the early 80s. And you saw Treasury yields and, and Fed interest rates move higher on that first spike and then settle down and then have to move higher again. And, and so you know, in the grand scheme of things, we've only been in this environment for two years. In the 70s and 80s, that was almost a 10-year battle against inflation. Um, of course, not hoping for that, but uh, the only other data point that I, I can really point to, um, you did see two separate spikes in inflation in essentially the same time frame. Uh, so it's, it's definitely on the table. Um, and he hasn't come out uh, and, and said at all that we're definitely not hiking ever again. They're monitoring inflation. They're looking at rate cuts right now. But this could absolutely uh, turn around. Um, and it, it'd be kind of weird if inflation in the US got under 2% and employment and GDP continue to outperform. Um, and so uh, we'll see if employment and GDP come down a little bit like they have in other global economies. Or if this inflation stays sticky or edges higher, it's hard to see cuts this year, and uh, you might see hikes uh, back on the table. So much, um, so much in play. It's fascinating to uh, you know continue to monitor how things change almost on a daily basis. And I mean, what a difference four or five months makes at this point. You know, we're not even let's be honest that far into the year. So more to come. Uh, Frank Aberna, as always, uh, great input, uh, director of strategy over at IG.com. Scan that QR code. Uh, we'll see you again on Thursday. Thanks, Brennan. He almost said hike, it's but almost, then he didn't. So it, it's almost comical. Thank you, as always, yes, Frank. Yes, thank you, Frank. Wow. But like 245 hits, and we joke about this, and I know, and I understand, like Frank's not sitting there buying the stock market uh, when he comes on, nor is anyone buying just because Frank is on. But lo and behold, at 245, the market went up. Like, uh, a, like uh, Tesla came out, it broke that 50 level, we took the 30 cent hit on that, and the market just came right back in, retesting toward 1800. Whoops, I don't want to full screen that. Uh, but there was a, no, a story on Boeing whistleblower saying that 787 should get halted, uh, grounded I think is actually the term. Apple just made a move into VWAP. I wait, it was a red candle a second ago, but this is a three minute. It was coming back in. When it got back under 170, I went into the short. Boeing spiked up. Oh my goodness, NVIDIA's gonna take up the high today. Boeing had spiked up and then given a short off the highs and then that whistleblower story came and it's not really moving. Longevron's on the move. There was a story related to them as well, so watch out. Uh, but a heck of a lot went uh, on. Emily saying Boeing long. If it breaks the high, maybe I'll think about the Boeing long. But what's breaking the high right now is NVIDIA. So this really? probably, we were sort of saying NVIDIA at VWAP would have been a thing. Didn't take it. It didn't quite get there. That's not an excuse. It's just the truth. Like, it didn't really get into the level I would have liked for a long trade. Tank, tank. So, uh, yeah, there you are. NVIDIA's about to take out those highs. I'm going to double check. Uh, what else is, is AMD up there? I just shorted Apple, man. Apple, yeah. Apple, Apple's the one Apple's for me. Apple's right here. You know, I mean, Apple is really the one for me right now. Uh, nice trading here for AAPL. We waited, man. We waited like a thief in the night, boys and girls, uh, for this Apple trade. And there it is right there up at, yes, sir. Holy, let's go, man. Apple immediately going into PL land uh, one more time here. For, look at all these shorts. They were just little baby trades, honestly. Just having fun, building the position. Um, I actually started shorting AMD thinking I was on Apple, and then I was like, what am I doing? Um, so right there, uh, here we come back in for Apple. It's, a, it's 20, it's two dimes. What's better than one dime? Two dimes. Uh, so here we go back in right now. Let's see if we get more bids out there on 80. And there it is again, shout out to all my guys behind me, where we talk about find the names you want to trade and then trade the damn things, right? Look at that. There it is right now. It's a beautiful move to the downside for Apple. So yeah, man, uh, we did it again right there with Apple. So that's a good one. Just looking at what the damage is on Disney. Still, let's hold that. Come on, bring it on down to 
I don't know which ville it is right now, but let's bring it on down to Lickaville because here it comes right down. That's the it's best one. Apple with a nice move down and boom, we said we go on empty powder and then we light that keg up with an apple short. Ooh, the keg. See, Lickerville keg. I'm on the wrong like page the for keg. that. I can get on over to it. Get some steaks. You know, I'm going to say you get a better steak. Oh, a way better steak. I used to, yeah, I'm not really a keg. A oh, way better steak. But uh, when you keg size them drinks every now and then, it can be fun. Keg size them drinks. Rivian Millionaire. Are there any of those, really? <sighs> ASML earnings tomorrow. Just the CEO, yeah, my guy. We'll get, we'll get into some of those, but yeah. Uh, ASML, a big bellwether stock. Look, I think at the end of the day, Apple got to VWAP. That's great. Boeing's starting to come back into the downside uh, as well. So let's let that one flush. I have bid now at the 50 level for Apple. That's 170, 169.50. It was into the 170 level. And I think if we do reverse this Frank move, I'm just joking around calling it the Frank move up, why wouldn't you retest 169 even? That seems entirely plausible to me. So let's get out on the bid. Uh, there, let's see if there gets another move. Uh, UAL also reports after the close. We didn't do that in the morning, by the way, just because we got some earnings. I mean, you have some earnings that are coming through. I believe UNET, UAL. Yeah. Um, ASML is a big, big stock. Great company, all that good stuff out there. But I'm sitting in only shorts after Frank did. Oh, yeah, I'll show you Tesla. It wasn't a huge move up on Tesla, but it was enough. I was shorted at VWAP. I had to stop at the 50 level. You'll see it break out. I wasn't going to hold it all the way into 157, 150, and I thought it'd be another trade if it got to the high of the day. Obviously it did not, and if I would stuck with it, we'd still be in the money, but you gotta have an out somewhere. Uh, so Tesla, now back underneath VWAP, still down that 3%. Maybe the market's going to come in. All that had to happen was Frank had to get off his podium, <laughs> apparently. Not that he's on a podium. You know Re what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Remember when we left you guys at 11 o'clock and we were like, yeah, we're four for four, but we didn't want to stop. Okay, I mean, we just put Apple on, so then that's gonna be five. Then we put on, uh, I guess it was Disney. So that's gonna be six for six. And now we wait for a possible seven spot to come through here uh, once again for you guys um, on the show. So we'll see if we can uh, ring it up here again. And, I, and as we talked about it, it's, um, you know, be patient and see what's going to happen. We could wind up losing on this. Neil brought this story. Uh, we heard it. It was on Benzinga. I, I actually didn't even read the story, but it was what you said. Possible grounding there. Well, the whistleblower is saying yeah. it should be grounded. I mean, they the whistleblower to... said that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I might just... You don't have to listen. I don't know. What is that 50 period? I mean, look, I'm here to take profit and, 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 and make good trades. So maybe we'll do that. Uh, get something. Oops, I just canceled an Apple trade. We don't want to do that. Maybe put a bid out here and just take out half in and around 75 for Boeing. We can do that. Um, and then at least we'll be playing with a little bit of house money uh, on that one. I was initially waiting for 50 where, the 50, where the 200 period was, but this story doesn't seem to be as exciting as maybe we once thought. So we'll, we can give a breather to that. Um, my Apple trade has been pretty good, man. I mean, I like this. That is 50, uh, 60s. All right, I want to put a bid at 60-ish, and then watch out if we can get to 200 at 40s. Let's go in between 40 and 50. I don't think the market's going to get here. Doesn't it feel like we're just doing this again? You know, like we were underneath. Remember I told you guys, like, what are we going to do? We're going to wait for something like this. So all you have to do is clip it, rewind it back, and then you'd be able to figure out that we called this. Wait on your hands, you know, get that powder and make sure that you're able to light it up when you get those opportunities. And so look at this, tick, 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 boom, right there to the downside and put some more money in the pocket. Chips We're at the right back at the highs. GE is? Chips, oh, SM chip. Sky is up 8% and hunting for $1,000 today. Wow, that's, uh, that's interesting there. I don't think oh, by the way, Boeing. Did you get out of Boeing? No, you're still... I took some out. It boom. wasn't moving, so I flat, I don't know. Guys, that's seven It's a seven. whistleblower saying a comment that do, do the regulators, look, do they have to ground it because of that? I think it's not good news for Boeing. They report next week, Tuesday. Um, you can go with that. No, I, let me, I should double check that. I actually don't. It might be Monday. <laughs> they report next week on Boeing. And uh, let's see what they had to say. It's the 24th. Okay, next week, Wednesday. All right, I was off by a day. But what the heck is going on with SMCI? Because it is, it is breaking out in a big way. 
when I have, just because I have 970 marked off doesn't mean I want to short it at that level. It means I like the short at that level when it was there the last time. And I'm thinking, no. Why is SMCI so strong when this stock goes squeezing, it just continues to go? Tobias, like, we can check out Fisker, we just can't trade it. Um, it's FSRN on the pink sheets. I always forget what these codes are for. It's at nine, it got to nine cents today. You know, Fisker. It, yeah, it's, so, it's actually not crazy every now and then when a stock goes to the OTC and gets all the, you know, the bad news, and then you get a relief rally on it. This really has been good. So, I mean, I didn't do it. Where's the congratulations on this one? It's still going up. It's probably the best performing EV name in the last week. I'm going to make the assumption because nothing else is going up, and it's up 57% today. But it's a penny stock and could be going under. So I think this is... If we ever talk about taking profits, make sure you take profits, this would be a prime example. Like if you're long this at two cents and you just got a quadruple, you could be playing with some house money when you take profits. And when I used to trade penny stocks, that's exactly what my approach would be. It's like make sure you take your profit, take it and run, take it and go. There's a, that's Russell Peters. I know you know take it and go. Uh, so I'm still in GameStop, going sideways off the high of the day. This is about 1042. I'm short here at 34, so we're risking just under 10 cents to see if it'll pull back in. And it's a similar trade with AMC. Like we are sitting in AMC as it's at that resistance level. It wicked the high. We're short it right here at the 80s. It's not really moving down. It's not really moving up. It's still three o'clock, so there's still some time for it to work in here. But you know, at some point, like this stock should either do something or. You know, if it just runs back into the high, I might just have to get out of it for lack of movement at all. All right. Uh, I mean, I know so someone said in the chat, SMCI is an upgrade, that's why it's going. I know, but price upgrades, to me, I think it's more of like a bit of a, a relief rally squeeze on SMCI than anything else. Like, someone giving it a price upgrade doesn't always mean it's going to move uh, more than all of its other cohorts. I think it's just bouncing technically off support. It's regaining the 50 period. Like, it's probably some technical dip buyers uh, in addition to that. Looking for an excuse. And the upgrade just ends up being the excuse for it to rally. Yeah, we don't have any excuses here. Um, and just alert alerts. I'm getting out of Boeing at VWAP. Yeah, Boeing, nice move, man. That is really paying off as well, as Neil just mentioned there. Uh, Boeing, a monster. Uh, 50 cents in the money and still going. So that's a good one. And by the way, we just took out some more of Apple right now. It was kind of just hovering around 75. I took an 80 fill there. So we are now out uh, of, not out. We have, we're out of about, about of about 75%-ish, maybe 70% of Apple right now. Again, like when we came back in, that, that was good. And we just said that we were going to wait around for these trades to happen. And they did, so we hit it. And that was that. So now we just have about 25%. It's actually, it's less, between 20 and 25%, but more, more near 20. All right, we could go short again. I don't mind that trade, but at the end of the day, we don't need to keep on reloading and reloading and reloading. Let's just stick with what we are doing right now on this trade. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna watch Apple. We do have a bid right now at 65, which is basically the 50 period. The 50 period is 55, but a little bit of a dip down. We're noticing that ledge right there is 65. So if Apple wants to crank a little bit, then we'll be here for that. So we'll- things from Elon here. We'll wait. Oh, there's something from Elon? Uh, we're simplifying and streamlining the whole Tesla sales and delivery system. Um, it has become complex and inefficient. So, I mean, I guess you could read that as, I mean, cost cutting and trying to simplify processes, that just to me means more uh, cost cutting and looking for efficiency. So he's saying the right things. I think that's semi bullish of a comment uh, for Tesla, but it, it's not really moving that much on it. But hey, if Elon's tweeting, you want to pay attention. So I want to make sure we got that to you. I'm not seeing a lot of movement. I saw it in the chat, shout out to you, Top VoIP. You also said the same thing. Uh, Tesla really not Top moving off that uh, at all. So I'm kind of similar in Apple in that it's slowing, starting to slow down. Like if that entire move up was a dollar twenty, from I guess that's pre-Frank. So like right here, it goes about eighty cents to the upside. If we come to the chart, Ram Ram, thanks. Uh, if we go like eighty cents up when it broke this consolidation, goes into the high, and all it can do is pull back twenty cents and then starts going sideways. Respect that. 
and now if it wants to curl and make another low, we'll get, at, we'll get that out in front of the 245, I guess, ramp zone. Is that what I want to call it? So we'll call it the ramp zone at 245, which is at 169 and a quarter. That's where the bid is going to be. Yeah, I mean, down, crowd control is like you call it downsizing, uh, Tesla picking up. But Tesla's, you have demand concerns, man. When demand goes down, you buckle down, and then it's like, you know what? Like, it's like in Fallout. Like right now, actually, if you haven't seen Fallout, okay, I don't want to spoil Fallout. I don't want to, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to do that analogy. It's a perfect analogy for the EV names and then the different factions in Fallout. Essentially, just think of a bunch of pe different people trying to survive the apocalypse. And it comes down to whose way of surviving the apocalypse is going to be better. And they're all doing it right now in the EV space. And I think Tesla's got a bit of a head start, but it doesn't mean they have to win. They're going to win. But uh, yeah, I, was, I almost gave a spoiler on that. And I realized it just came out on Amazon. People probably haven't seen it. One other update for you. Uh, Peloton for a range bound trade, short 13, 15. It's going all, it keeps on going down to like eights and tens. I have a bid for the low at three even. And I feel like tomorrow, maybe, I don't want to speak in 100% certainty, but there might be a $3 break on Peloton tomorrow. And it's not going to be SSR either because it's not 10% down. So uh, this will be on alert for me. It's been an okay short, but I feel like there's a bigger opportunity coming. The bottom, I don't think, is in yet for Peloton. Let's go to the desk and take care of business. This part of the show brought to you by IG. Got opinions on central bankers, geopolitics, and economic data? Apply your macro views with the Forex account at IG. Currencies like Euro and USD can require as little as 2% margin rates and offer $0 commissions trading using a Forex account at IG. For a limited time, traders can open, fund, and trade with IG for up to $10,000 in funding bonuses. Terms and conditions apply. The other one, it doesn't matter. All right, now IG, we're baby. yeah. Now we're in uh, now we're in Boeing, and uh, we doing it again, baby. And look what just happened to Apple. Money, 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 money. What's up, everybody? Uh, there it is. Nice move to the downside right there. So yeah, I mean, of course we're going to celebrate. That's that's what we do here. You know, it's we're just trying to show you that this is you know we're trading real money, real equities. Um, and like I said, you, you can ask us any questions if we're positive on a stock, anything like that. If you want us to look at a name, um, if you want us to go over trades that we've had, if there's anything you're thinking you want us to comment on, put that in the chat as well. Right now we have over, I want to thank everybody. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, we have over 4,000 people right now watching, which isn't that many. Uh, hit the like, man. 11, that's obviously not right. 12 likes. I mean, I have to probably refresh, to refresh this. No, you uh, always have to refresh. Yeah, we always have to refresh. Let me refresh this. Oh, God. Uh, now I have this ad here. All right. Well, anyways, 400 likes. All right. Over 3,800 people watching. This better, you know, we got to, I mean, what else? what else? You know, what are we supposed to do? Like, right here, we talked about this Apple trade. Sit on your hands, do that. We just put Boeing. I mean, Boeing? You know, that's a good trade right there. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Let's get that number a little bit higher than where we are right now. Boeing down into VWAP will probably just take this profit down into 169.20. We'll, we'll do that. We've already made that money on that name. We took out half. We're obviously playing with house money right now. So let's put a bid down into there. That's 169.20. Uh, we'll bid it and then we'll see if we can get that. Apple really, man, the apple of my eye right there. Uh, we talked about sitting at 65. You saw me take that fill, came in, came out. That's Apple. Put it on the board. Yeah, and it just continues. Like the markets now pull back in. The timing of it is almost hilarious that it was at three o'clock, but it is what it is. I'm just going to have to say, like, if a stock goes, I said this before, like, if a stock goes sideways on you and you're anticipating a bit more movement because it was more volatile, then you adjust with the market. So, obviously, a trade where I'm shorting off of a level like this and looking for a deeper pullback giving to the highs. When it's not going, you tighten up the stop and just say it's not worth the wider range. It's also 320, by the way. You got to throw that out there. You know, when you get later on in the session, when you're day trading, there's less time for the move to happen. Is this really going to fall back to 250 in the allotted time? Now, all of a sudden, it's 10 minutes until we get the early looks. I'm just going to tighten the stop up. I'm not giving to the high of the day um, on AMC, and if the market flushes, like it should probably still be good. We'll give it to like 82s in there. 
Um, there was a move on SOUN, and I think someone was saying, what's going on with SOUN? If NVIDIA goes back a little bit, SOUN goes back a lot. And NVIDIA just came back off the high. So this is right back into VWAP. I think this gives up $4 if NVIDIA can't hold on to VWAP itself. And there was another question about stocks halting. Stocks can halt for news. Stocks can halt because of volatility. And if you're ever curious as to why a stock is halting, I do suggest if you're in a halted stock and you're curious of what's happening, just go to NASDAQtrader.com. They have a halt page. It'll give you the code. The reason code, it'll say. LUDP, and you hover over it, and of course, now that I do it, there you go, volatility trading pause. If it's news-based, you'll see something like, that's oh, volatility, I guess, yeah, there you go. If it's news-based, you'll see T1, T2, T3, and then you know they're waiting news to be disseminated. The last one was uh, much, must have been earlier today. Apple could be a reload, I do think, but if you're trading a halted stock, you wanna know why. Because if it's volatility halt, it's gonna trade again that day. And if it's a news-based halt, well, you might not be opening until the next day, or sometimes it'll be a couple of days as they're pending information, and you need to know that because you could be stuck in it uh, for the long haul. If we get back into VWAP, I would reload Apple, see what it can do one more time. It's, um, I'm not reloading anything. We just, I just tagged it right here. Join me tonight uh, with Brian Shannon. I mean, again, where is it? Where did I tag him? Right there. So join me with Brian Shannon here. 300,000 followers. Shout out to Brian. He'll be on with me tonight on the Market Recap Show. As traders stay late, I should have actually uh, tagged that. Can I edit this? Yes, I can. So let's do that right. Got it. You have a uh, time to edit now. Uh, yeah, I think. Oops, I just typed in edit. Uh, traders stay late. So stay late tonight, and we will get that. I put out the tweet here, uh, the link to the show, so anybody watching it uh, can see what we're up to here on Trader TV Live. So, you know, just make sure that um, you, w you wait wait for me tonight. We'll have that going. We'll have Brian Shannon come on. But there it is. We'll wait for that VWAP trade back in on, on that one. Okay, uh, that's Boeing. Uh, Disney, Apple, AMD. How do you pick? Oh, what's up, the Piper? What's up, Piper? Dang, what's up, the Piper? Uh, okay, I'm not going to do a roll call now. I'm going to save that for later. Uh, okay, so let's go find out what, what everyone's talking about here uh, before we go. So, all right, um, we're not going anywhere, but just before I go, the Piper just said something. Here you go. How do you pick the low like that on Apple? I mean, luck. Honestly, I mean, there's not, to pick the low, like that was just a great pick. And we've talked about this all the time. And that is, is that to be able to get lucky to get something like that. And then if you're going to look over here at my other example for NVIDIA, I mean, dear Sean, you know, how did you pick at that time right there the high to punch out of your short? You know, um, there's going to be lots of examples like that throughout. I don't know if I have any more today. I mean, what about this one? You see like how Intel there, we hit that high and then it drops down. So all I have to say is, and Neil did his lesson of the day on this, at the end of the day, all you can do is look back, look at your trades, look at how much money you've made or lost on them, and then keep doing the ones that work and do them more aggressively and stop doing the ones that don't. And honestly, my method here so far this month, I mean, we has been pretty good. And that is picking levels, trading names with catalysts. Uh, so when we had this Apple trade, I just did the same thing. You know, we know we want the short. We talked about waiting for it to sort of get up. It did exactly that. It got to the level that we liked. We put on some shares, then it came back. And then you see this little high right there? That's 65. So all I did was find that level and put a bid there. You know, if we had had, like we keep saying sort of, um, you know, like half jokingly, if we have that uh, magic, you know, magic uh, potion or magic eight ball or anything, shout out to D. Westermeyer, hopefully that's coming soon. Uh, um, but again, these don't tell us anything other than having It's just fun. for fun. No, he is sending it. He actually no, I know, of course he is. asked for some confirmation of things we may or may not want. What I would say for Apple is have a look at what it's done in the last times it's bounced. So it made the, like, ever since it broke this range here, so like the top at 169.80, and then it retested the bottom. So double bottoms there. Ever since it started going up, where does it consolidate next? This previous level, right? And then the next time back down in, it consolidates at another level where it did before. It then goes up, 
you have once, and then when it started going higher, 169.25 was resistance, and then right in here in a three minute, it turns into support. And then the next resistance was 169.65, and then that turned into support. So it, it turned into a range, tra range trading stock, and a range trading stock tends to treat the, next cons the last consolidation level as the next consolidation level. And that's essentially all that happened in here. Like this was a consolidation level before, like up at top, so then it turns into one after. And when you're scalping, that essentially that's what you look at, is you're looking at those, it's showing you the range, and when it shows you a range, whether it's 30 cents or 50 cents, you just sort of respect um, whatever it happens to be. Like it, the range is gonna be what it tells you. I just reloaded off that local high, and we're gonna scalp inside of the range again, which is still at this point to the 60s, whether it gets all the way back down there again, we'll see. I'll put a bit halfway. Maybe we'll take it all out uh, before. Apparently, this Weiss is still going. So yeah, I just saw someone. I didn't know if you knew anything about that one. Well, I only I made it. I I, just, I made a lame joke about it during the midday while it was moving. I don't actually know uh, too much about what's happening here. It's just bouncing off of VWAP. So it's, I mean, it's a seventy cent move, but the stock has a six dollar, six and a half dollar range today. So it's making a bit of a move here. If it gets back above six, it's a bit late in the day. I think if you're long off VWAP, that's the jam. You want to be getting the bounce off VWAP, not chasing the bounce off VWAP. Uh, so, so congrats to anybody that does have it. I don't know if this is one I want to chase. It's already pulled back a lot today. Like that's a hefty, hefty pullback. It's pulled back three bucks. Oh. Yeah, I don't know about that. Fill up 225%. It was just one of those low flows. Here comes AMD, they say. Let me go over and have a quick look at AMD. And again, remember when we were trading AMD? Uh, and it was like, oh yeah, you know, we like the long down here. Everything is all right. And there we go. Oh, there's an example of the Piper. I mean, here's a perfect example, to be honest with you. I mean, we got stopped out right there before it ripped up a dollar. This is where I thought I was shorting Apple, but I wasn't. I was uh, shorting AMD, and then once I realized that, we got in and out right away. Uh, so if you're noticing that one, that's, that's what's coming from that. So that's a little bit embarrassing, but we just got in and out there immediately. That's just a fun story, I guess, at the end of the day. Uh, but here's AMD again. We've written down AMD at 164. We should have taken that. We are in Apple. AMD 164 is your sticky note trade of the day, um, and so that's good. Did someone just yell question? Was that you? What no. was that? That was Benzinga. No, oh, yeah, okay. That was nothing. Um, okay, so we should be thinking about shorting right now at 164.40. So I'm thinking something like that. Um, 164.40, 164.50 for AMD. So let's short that if we're able to do that here on AMD. I will be waiting, so that's going to be a good short. We'll see that. I am also still in Boeing. Apple, I'm going to wait until we get a little higher. Our last short was in and around here at 170. Where am I short now? Oh, threes. So uh, right there, 178.10 or so it looks like was our last short. So we'll see if we get back up there. That's what I'm going to wait for and see if we can do some damage on that. We're near the high of our day right now, and we've been putting damage on the board. So I'm really happy with this trade. We'll hold on to Apple. We'll hold on to Boeing, and we'll just hold on to Disney into the close. And uh, I was short AMD all morning, and that's why I loved it. Uh, there's AMD, we talked about how good that sort of trade was, and there it is right there. So boom, boom, look at this. We just put this on as we left you guys at 11 o'clock. That's almost a dollar, that is a dollar. What am I talking about? It's 164 to 163. So that was really good, and then this was another banger there, but we did get stopped out somewhere. No, we didn't. Yeah, AMD was a great trade today. We went long there was the mistake. Short up in here, good trade. So that's what we're doing right now with AMD. And yeah, man, another one of those days. Coin 220, I see Neil's on it. There was a, oh, I was, just, I, was just, I was just scanning stocks to see where it was. It's actually going higher. So Coinbase is gonna close above support here on the daily. It'll end up being a failed breakdown off the 50 period at 215 if it does close higher, which is bullish for tomorrow. And I don't, I'm not really feeling longs in coin, but the setup is the setup. Uh, it's making a reversal. I think you got to respect it if it closes after making that liquidity grab underneath, it's going to be good. There was a headline for Robinhood that I just heard, but it was like, it was like Webull was the main story and Hood wasn't really moving. I'm keeping an eye on it because it is trying to break out the top here on Hood. We'll see, but it didn't seem like it was too big of a deal. That looks like it's trying to break those highs up to a couple of points today. There was a lot of the payment processors that were gapped down and have recovered. One of them 
PayPal, one of them was a bigger gap down in recovery than others, and I'm talking about PayPal. I think this is worth being on the radar. I like liquidity grabs, but liquidity grabs that bounce off the 50 and the 200, exactly the same, almost the same spot here in the low 60s, and it wicked and bounced right off both of them to get right back above 63. So that's a great looking reversal candle after a couple of days to the downside on PayPal, and then you're gonna close holding the highs. This could be a nice, interesting breakout for tomorrow. But um, I think we have, we had some earnings, like UAL and uh, ASML. We'll probably go to the earnings board in a couple of minutes, maybe let you guys know. I did reload Apple. I got 96 to the south side. It's now holding the 80, so a bit of a higher low. I tightened the stop on AMC, still not moving. GameStop, still not moving. Peloton, just to go back over it, it's not giving you the big flush yet. I think it's finding some support at the $10 level. It just spiked down in. If it breaks view up, I'm just going to jump out of this one. Don't think we're going to get that low all the way at three bucks. Adara? Yeah, so I have that note here on Robinhood. Basically, uh, this came out here on Twitter from AD to uh, Attorney General, sorry, Todd Rakita of Indiana, saying that they're looking, leading a multi state inquiry as to whether Webull might have exposed clients' personal information that does have to do with the fact that Webull is based in China. So basically, some concerns about privacy with China and an investigation into Webull led by the Attorney General of Indiana. That's what this Robin Hood news is, guys. Thank you, Adara. Like, I heard. Like I heard Robin Hood in my ear of the Benzinga, but I didn't have the volume up enough. So uh, thank you for getting the story right. I knew it had something to do with Webull and wasn't specific uh, to Robin Hood. But obviously, I mean, something bad for your competitor is good for you in this particular case. So, I mean, Apple, it's turning from when Powell was on, Apple was moving dollars at a time. Um, he wasn't, I mean, not on. I mean, when Powell was speaking at whatever that conference was, moving dollars at a time. And now it's moving 20 cents at a time. So if that's what the move is, that's what we're going to take. It is now 3.30. Early look on some of these imbalances. You got some energy there. GM. 3.30 already? Yeah, it's 3.30 already. GM oh is an God. early sell, 2 million. BAC, which had earnings 1.5 million to the sell side. Enbridge, 1.1. That'll pair off. Enbridge, dual listed and pairs almost every single time. Uh, Neo, that's way too small of a matter. That's the morning. Oh. So not anything significant on the early look. I suppose BAC, because, because of the report, We'll check in on that closer to 350 if it's going to move the stock. But I don't think that's significant at all in terms of, uh, in terms of these imbalances moving the market. We always like to have a look because you, you never really know when one of these is going to be significant and actually move the stock. I'll never forget, this was actually was live on the show, it was Rivian. You were trading it. And Rivian was within the first couple of weeks of it coming to market. IPOs never have imbalances early on. It just doesn't happen. And then randomly Rivian did in the first two weeks, and it really moved the stock. So you just don't know where your bread's going to be buttered uh, late in, later in the day. So we reloaded Apple. It's like a nice little scalp trade in here, but it's not moving crazy. And as I said, the small cap names that we're in, we're just holding on. They're not against. They're not for. They're basically all just trading flat. And we've tightened the stops on them. That Wisa stock is still going there. All right, um, I'm doing, so as I'm sitting here trading and thinking of stuff to talk to you guys about, I'm also doing the market recap show. And right now, I put as the first headline, sideways but up. So do you think we can hold positive here? Maybe we can get a um, poll up. Do we think the NASDAQ stays positive today? What, what is the- um, What are we right now? What are the, point three. What is the ES, point eight, ooh. I mean, the ES might be even more of a spicy meatball uh, than those ones. But um, yeah, I'm thinking that that might not be a horrible poll. What do you want? NASDAQ. I mean, let's do NASDAQ. A little more exciting there. More likely to have some volatile moves, I think, is the NASDAQ. So then we can put that vote in. My vote, um, I don't like that double top there. I think we close red. Shoot, I just wrote sideways but up. So I'm going to vote against the odds right now. Um, and take, take, the, take the money uh, on the plus .23 right now and go red. So you Take the points. Yeah, I'm taking the points. Yeah, we don't do spreads on our poll. Uh, uh, I don't know if I want it, it to dump, but we'll see. I'm just going to say that, and we'll see where that goes. So I'll dismiss this from there, and then we'll check it back uh, to get those odds when we get later on in the show. So I think that was a pretty well, good Well, I'm, uh, I'm taking the obligatory dump it because I'm all short. 
So. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm one in one. Well, I got Boeing. Boeing's going to be a beast of itself. I have Disney here as well. But we do have Apple. Apple's really starting to come in, man. 170.03. Nice move back in right now. We could just put a bid here at 50 and capture some of this. I don't think that there's anything wrong with doing that. So if we can get in, there it is. Honestly, I know you got that reload. That's a good one. Uh, there goes Apple right back in again. So we'll put this on the board. We'll go sevens today, seven for seven again. We did this last week um, and we're doing it again today. So fluke, uh, I don't know, but it's so far so good. There's Apple making that move back in and we done it. We done did it one more time on that one. So I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to get set up for the close. There's another one. We put it on the board again. It's a chicken dinner winner for the short. Not only that, but we also voted for the short. So maybe we can win twice here. But honestly, for me, it's all about those Benjamins, baby. Uh, we'll, we'll focus on what this market's doing and what our stocks are doing. And they're starting to head downside. So this is, uh, this is good. This is real good. Nice move to the downside. Hey, man, we just called at least a little bit of a downside push, holding on to some of these trades. Boeing's starting to come in again. We'll take that at VWAP. We, we're pretty light here on uh, Disney, but it's bouncing off that level again. You want to try this one more time? 113.60 bottom. Okay, let's try Disney uh, and take some more shares down here just in case this move is a little bit uh, overdone to the downside. We'll see about, there we go. We'll get some 77s and some 78s and then punch out if we break below whatever this is. Honestly, what is this wick here? 60s? We already have that bottom. Uh, right there, whatever this is, we're out. Yeah, break of 60, we're out of Disney. Where's Disney? Once, yeah, that's like the, was it BWAP or the 50 period? Uh, either way, either so way, you're now beneath be that support trade. level at the 60 level on Apple. So it's trying to head lower. It just punched through. Finally, I think maybe you could see that 69. It would still be a higher low for it. Uh, I see Adrian talking about Lulu in the chat. Hopefully not going further down, but you know, it is what it is. That stock's been under a lot of pressure lately. So we have three, it's 336. We do have some time till we get to those imbalances at 350. So I want to give a chance uh, for these to start working back in. We didn't end up putting on a trade in, did you put it on a trade in AMD? Uh, AMD? Uh, I did earlier, but not right now. No, yeah. So AMD, you know what though? It didn't quite get to 165. So we're sort of saying 160. I mean, it got to 164 and a quarter, but AMD going to hold-ish VWAP. I shouldn't speak before the day yeah. is done. But I was going to say AMD's holding on to VWAP. Um, NVIDIA, I don't know why I just typed it with an S. NVIDIA as well is going to hold above VWAP. You had Intel showing some strength. You have SMCI near the highs of the day. So like Apple weak underneath VWAP and the chip names, they might be catching a bit of a bid because there's some relative strength in there even as the market is hunting for red. It's not there just yet. That NASDAQ at point one. It could actually, what's interesting is the shorts could work because the NASDAQ goes down, bounces off of flat for the day, and then the shorts that are on work, like Apple, but then it still closes green. We're, uh, thank you, Mr. Kevin Mendoza. Yes, it will be a trophy day and pretty good one too. Um, look at this. This is apparently the Dubai airport right now. All of Dubai right now is basically flooded. So shout out to everybody in Dubai. This is the airport, uh, as you can see right now. So I have no idea what is going on there, but that is Nasty. pretty, that's pretty wild uh, right there. So I don't know, this is from this guy Gergivan that I follow. He has a lot of followers, so I don't know if that's AI generated or what, but uh, right there, if they're- What, the image? Why would that be fake? Well, I don't know, I'm just saying, I never know anything uh, anymore, but that's pretty interesting to see that. Join me tonight on the Market Recap Show with, uh, like we said, man, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Brian Shannon will be joining your boy on the Market Recap Show, so that should be a heck of a lot of fun as we'll talk all about VWAP and all of that stuff, give you some good ideas, talk about some Netflix. Join me later on today on the Market Recap Show uh, where we will, again, continue to stay late for everybody as traders do indeed stay late. So join me tonight. We'll go over all of that. And by the way, money, remember we money, talked about what money, matters money, in this business? Money, money. Look, there it is right there again, man. I mean, it's another one here for us with Disney. We just bought a little bit down there. We'll take a little bit out. If it floats back up, good on that one. Uh, but Apple and Boeing are the only shorts that we have heading into uh, what is the close of the day here. So 338 right now. It's been a big day for us. We came back. We battled back. You never know. 
uh, what you're going to do when you have sort of those hits like yesterday, when you sit there and just watch, and you, like you're calculating your net. Okay, you know, when this come, happens, what are we going to be at? Um, and that was, that, that was painful, but we did it. We battled back, and then we put up the numbers again today uh, right back there, you know, like if Scheffler has a bad round, he comes right back. You know, you got to be, and we talked about this with Brankles, be consistent in what you're doing. You know, it's step up there. And I don't know if you guys watch the Masters, but you'll see Scotty Scheffler. He was just stoic. Every hole, going to every hole, doing the damn business, making sure that he's executing properly. And that's how you have sevens for seven days. You execute properly on the names that you're looking for, and you get a little lucky. You know, like Neil said, what? if you go perfect, you're either cheating, you're an algo, or you just happen to do it a couple times in a couple weeks. No, but I mean, and, and that's difference. no, but that's no, but that you are right. Algos trade like a thousand trades a day. I yeah, I only have three hundred. But the thing is, here today is that's the whole point. You trade how you trade, and uh, today, yeah, you know, seven for seven is lucky, but it's a process. Follow the process, and you too can do that. So um, that's what it's all about. Keep the positive vibes going. Um, shout out to Sharif uh, for that as well. That meant a lot when he mentioned that to me. So SMCI uh, nine hundred and seventy dollars. We're gonna get a thousand tomorrow on that stock. Uh, wow. Okay. One upgrade, really? That's all it takes for SMCI. So Apple got back above that support level. I was gonna mention Apple. I got out of it. It came right back and held that support level. So I took it out. Which is gonna take the profit. I'm jumping on the bit of AMC. It'll be a flat trade. I'll probably just get on the bit of GameStop as well. We'll take a two cent hit there. Neither one of them ended up moving. Like I said, Peloton not moving, but Apple absolutely moving. One thing I want to say is like everyone has a different strategy. And, and one of the things we talk about here is like what, some traders might make one trade in a day. Yes. Um, Those are the best ones. Shout out to Wayne right now. No, like, there's, like if you make one trade in a day, it gets very different from I'm looking for reverses off of VWAP, which there might be 20 of those that, that can set up for you. You might take three or four of them, and that's going to be different. You know, and, that's, and I think you have to make sure you understand what you're doing, but just have a, have a good sense of risk to reward. Like you don't want to be in a situation where, like let's say, you, let's say you have a day where you make nine out of 10 calls right, you want to be green on that day. If you make, no, I'm, I'm being dead serious about that because yep. we, no, we were talking about that trader. Um, I don't want to say I almost said his name uh, before that traded that great open, and that was sort of the problem. Like he was making money back and forth off of the open, and he probably hit like ten trades in a row, and then the eleventh one shut him down, and so he was like ten for eleven, and that's an extreme example. But I'm only saying it because it came to mind. So, anyways. Um, but Rash on that example, that was one day. Like that's not repetitive, right? No, no, no. no. We, we, we had done this last week. What's that? We had done this last week. I'm no, but I'm saying. not talking about. I was talking about if you if you have a nine out of ten, you don't want the tenth trade to ruin the entire day. Like, oh that's yeah, all, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, I'm yeah, saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's what happened to this guy. Uh, someone just said something about yeah, Sebastian. That's what we're all about here. Again, I just want to. It was not. This trader was. This was years ago at our old floor. People keep putting in. Is it this person? Is it Luca? No, 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 no. This was a trader like 15 years ago. None of you would know him. It was just a guy on our floor. Look, you don't see traders around here because they, they're not here because trading didn't work out. I mean, let's just call it like it is. You know, that's what, that's what happens. I'm, no, I'm just saying the story is from so long ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I know. I don't want people to think that we're blowing people up here. No, I'm just... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen a lot of traders over, over time. Someone just said upstart buyout. I've heard nothing. I've heard zero on upstart in the news at all today. So I'm going to assume they're not being bought in. The chart? Yeah. No. Upstart? Yeah, I don't uh, think there's anything going on with Upstart. I haven't seen a single thing on the wire. Whoever put that in the chat, if you know something we don't, let us know. I'd, I'd be very curious. Upstart has been a very depressed stock. It's at the high of the day today. I just feel like a lot of names went squeezing. AMC went squeezing for a portion. At one point, Peloton tried. Uh, GameStop went. So I think a lot of these, c 3 AI at one point was up pretty big. I think some of these things just found bottoms a bit today. I don't know if there's any specific news here uh, at all. All right, um, hmm. so Disney is still dime. We already talked a little bit about that, but I'm not, um, that went to 114. We probably, so for everybody that's been here for many time, many years, or even a couple days, you'll know that at 350, we do have those imbalances that come out. So it's pretty prudent to be out of your trade when that comes through. So I don't have very many shares left of anything right now. 
We're still waiting for Boeing. This could be, I mean, maybe let's just get out if it breaks 170. Like, it didn't really do the action that we thought. We thought that we would get that level down there. Uh, what are we short? 170.03. Okay, let's just get out at like one. Let's just get out if it breaks 170, honestly. And we'll just get out there like 170 and change. I cancel my stop because we did miss that. We should have been sitting there at that level. But, you know, you asked that question. I uh, forget who it was now. Stripe. No, not Stripe. Somebody else. Uh, about, you know, picking the levels and everything like that. You know, it gets gets difficult to pick the tops and bottoms, so I should have been there for that one. All right, it's uh, time to pay some bills. Let's go over to the desk with Adara. Disney's going finally. Part of the show brought to you by Trade Ideas. Real-time scanning and alerting used in our desk by many of our traders every day. See what's moving in the moment with Trade Ideas. Check out the link in the description for 20% off. So you'll see, I actually, let's see, we punched out of here. We're going to give GameStop to 44, which is local high. Come to the chart for a second. We can. There we go. We're going to give GameStop to 44s, which was the high of the day. But as I said, like it was like, look at it start to barcode. Like it just, it, it literally moved nothing for like 20 minutes. So the second it took out that offer, I just punched out when it took out the local high. There's just no point. It's not really moving. AMC, I just took half out on the current bid, so that'll be flat. I'll give it a chance. Like, it's, it's not breaking any higher. If it gets above 80, I can always just punch out of it then. Peloton, sort of the same thing. I covered Apple, and Apple is starting to very slowly and gingerly glide higher, so not a heck of a lot happening over there. SMCI, like, I blink, and it's up another $8. Like, this is, this is Did getting we get a, a story on that. When, when? We cut an upgrade. I mean, I mean, the only story that I earning? saw or heard was that they got an upgrade. I don't even remember who. Not that it always matters who gives you the upgrade. And I mean, good for them. There's also a technical, I suppose there's a technical aspect to this. It's consolidating on the daily chart, and it, and it broke higher at about 9.44, not the time of day. Or yeah, like 9.44, 9.45, somewhere in here, it broke a local high and then just started squeezing. So on the 15 minute, yeah, it looks way better on the 15. It could just be... There's the wipeout bottom, kind of held the low stair step up, and then it broke out the top, and the last $25 have been just a pure momentum play into the upside on SMCI. Like, I've traded SMCI three times in the last year, and every single time I took the exact same setup. It was SMCI failed a breakout high, and then in the middle of the day, like between 11 o'clock and noon, it was a consolidation short under VWAP, and I've gone two for three doing it, and that's the only setup I have on MCI, SMCI that I like. Uh, so the next time it does a false breakout, consolidate lower under VWAP around noon, I would take the short, but um, that doesn't extend to chasing longs. Up 10%, good for them. All right. Uh, what's up, dude? All right. Get, get, to, work, get to work on that tonight. Uh, okay. You know, Ty... Ty, Ty landing these mark these deals. Landing these deals. Good job, Ty. Uh, if you were wondering who that, uh, who that handsome gentleman behind us is, with no screens turned on, that's Ty right now. He's also rocking the shorts today. Is it shorts weather outside? It was 18. I know it's, I know it's okay today. It's 16. Today. No, it's... Yeah. Oh, that was wind. It's 17. That's all. It's, yeah, it's close. And then he just say, I didn't think you were, you're going golf. Oh, he's going golfing, right? Oh, some of the boys are going golfing. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. That, uh, right there. Wow. Must be nice to have some free time. That is for sure. Uh, we'll be having that soon, probably in about five, six years. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Fabian. Yeah, you guys go home and chill out, man. That's okay. But traders will stay late, and so will one of them over there. I don't know which one. Who's lucky tonight? Oh, it's Ramin. Okay, good. Fabian, I'm uh, but um, yeah, so that should be a lot of fun. And then tomorrow, we I have a charity event at the Hockey Hall of Fame oh, nice. uh, that I'm going to. That should be a lot of fun. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I miss, unfortunately, back-to-back -back rep tryouts for my daughter because uh, we've got baseball and stuff like that uh, happening. But I say good luck to her, but, but she may have already made the team, if you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we're really happy for that one You're not supposed to know as we go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then here it comes up to the upside. 114 right there. Let's go, man. It's another face slapper as we go. And by the way, guys, just, just so you know, we are still positive on Boeing, but remember how we said 
how do you can you know prevent and as Neil mentioned, don't let that tenth trade be the one that wipes out months, days, stuff like that. So this would never happen. We didn't have that many shares on Boeing. Even if this went up like 100 bucks, it wouldn't ruin our day, honestly. So the idea here would be, well, 100 bucks would, 10 bucks wouldn't. So we have to watch out. So we get out there on that 170 break so we don't turn, again, a great trade into something else. So we'll wait for that, uh, see what happens right there with Boeing, and now just hold Disney. And then Apple's been great. We, we pretty much have the bottom if it breaks out there in one less than 15 seconds uh, on when these imbalances come out, then we'll see. And then I'll leave you guys around a couple minutes after that and we'll get set up for the close. But here we go, Neil, what are you in? So you still got Peton and, all right, well, unfortunately, Neil, I don't know how exciting those will be. Nah, uh, with the imbalance. I mean, to me had a decent chance because it had made move so much, but it didn't. Uh, the imbalances are out. The only things over a million are GM, BAC, and Enbridge which that's uh, not exciting, not exciting, and not exciting, all three of those. Apple's 956,000 to buy, Google wants 700,000, um, TLT is very small. Apple, I guess, is the interesting one because that was moving, it was weak most of the day, and if it's gonna be almost a million to the buy side, it didn't not move it, but that's not much of a bounce on Apple. So it ends up holding 169.50, but under VWAP, Apple un ending up under pressure here. Unless, something, unless a miracle happens, Apple is going to close down over a percent, percent and a half here when the market's going to be green. Heck. So, I mean, like Apple pulled back to so the short work, Boeing pulled back to so the short work, but really the actual bet on the NASDAQ itself closing red or green will end up closing green, even though there was no, a pullback. Oh, yeah. Well, I shouldn't speak. We have 10 minutes, nine minutes to go, but we just bounced a little bit. I'm just looking at this. Like the NASDAQ just put in a higher low. I guess it could still go red. But it's looking at least a teensy, teensy bit like that bet, if you happen to put it in. I said red as well. And uh, we're trying to close green here in the NASDAQ. Uh, Dara. Just keep an eye on Disney, Warner Brothers, and Fox here. Variety reporting that some lawmakers are voicing concern over Disney, Fox's, and Warner Brothers joint service. So in February, those three, or Disney's ESPN, teamed up for a sports streaming service now, as reported by Variety lawmakers expressing some concern. So keep an eye on those three companies, guys. Uh, well, on that note, let's just put it on the board, Hawk Harrelson, and say yes, because there's Disney. We do put that one on the board, and we do get out there at 07 or 08 um, and put that on the board one more time. I mean, look what we're trying to do. What's up, Chef Joe? I will address this in a minute. Uh, but there it is right there. It is a nice play. Disney. Buy the damn dips. We did it once, we did it twice. We will not have an opportunity, everybody, to do it thrice. Uh, here comes Apple. No matter where this goes, I gotta get ready to get uh, over to the other show. So we will sit here and take it out if it comes back down into 169 and change. And yeah, man, we did it again. So thank you everybody for watching. Um, it's been another big day. I'm sure we, we've seen that and we've been telling you about that. Uh, so hopefully you've been uh, able to be profitable yourself, and if not, there's always tomorrow because um, that's the one thing that we try to preach around here. The sun here. will come out tomorrow. Yeah, is that don't blow up your accounts Actually, that's one day um, and then come back the very, very next day and just do what you're doing, and hopefully you're able to do it with us because we have a lot of fun around here, um, and that's not going to stop. So I joke about the sun will come out tomorrow thing not being true because it's supposed. To, I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow here for us. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, nothing like what happened in Dubai. Like, we're not going to get flooded. Yeah, what was up with that? But... I mean, that looked remotely dangerous. I'm sure that all they were doing was landing the planes that they had to land. I'm assuming you would actually shut down the airport in a situation like that. But uh, whatever. Um, look, risk management is a must. You're absolutely right about that, AV. Shout out, uh, AV. We appreciate you guys in the, in the chat. Chef Joe, SMCI, thank you for everything today. Yeah, up 11%. It actually tagged $980. So I'd say that's a little bit surprising. I am shocked by that. I'm just gonna get on the midpoint here before 355 hits. These things aren't going anywhere. Uh, AMC is gonna end up closing, consolidating higher, which as much as I know I'm sitting in a short, that's kind of bullish for AMC. So it's gonna give you a pullback in the afternoon that doesn't follow through, and it's gonna consolidate above 275. 
Maybe it does have a second day breakout in it. If it holds 75 and can try to make a run at like 290 or a $3 break, it could be worth it looking for long. As I said, I just got on the midpoint and took 77 half out. Like we're in short 78 and a half and we're getting out short 77 and a half and we held the thing for an hour. It just flat out didn't go. Stock goes that parabolic if it's pulling back. I usually think it's going to pull back more than that. Obviously not the case here uh, with AMC. Uh, anything else you look? I mean, I'm not really looking at anything. I have, no, I'm, I'm going to have Tesla at the close. I was waiting for Apple, but I just have to get out. But I have to get over there. So um, Tesla's trying to get back to the highs for the close. Yeah, we're 30 cents in the money here. I might just put this bit out. I mean, like I said, I, I got to get over there. I should have I should have flattened this all out. Ah, that's okay. We have a very very small piece left. Literally the smallest, like nothing. Uh, so we'll wait to see where it goes. You know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna. There we go. I'm just gonna punch it out now. I. I Barely had any shares. I, I want to get over there. So, uh, all right. Thanks so much for watching. It's been obviously a bang up show. Um, we could keep on telling you what we're doing, but then uh, I sound like a broken record. You guys know. You can see what's good up there. So, so far, so good. Thanks for watching. We can just check out Boeing quickly into the close. There it is. That's the risk management. Look at Disney uh, straight to the upside. Stay with winners um, and you'll be okay. So, that's something there. Disney up stock today, market, although I did say red, it looks like it'll be exactly where we made the poll was when it was up 0.24. So it looks like it'll be basically flat exactly. into the close. Uh, but again, thank you so much. And then, yeah, Chef Joe, man, I think that's definitely a possibility. Uh, podcasts, yeah, man, we'll talk about cooking, barbecuing, all of that, drinks, a connoisseur type thing. I think that'd be hilarious if we did something like that, cigars. I think we could have a lot of fun. There's lots of possibilities with that. We are just getting started. I have bad cigar stories. Yeah, I exactly. Don't, I don't mind telling them. I don't smoke cigars anymore. Yeah, so uh, we'll, 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 we'll have exactly all those stories, stuff like that. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. So. But I was in Dallas, and I love the city of Dallas. But, uh, yeah, man, great. Dallas cigar, cigar Club, watching a Lakers game. It was like Lakers versus the Mavericks, I think, were in town. And, uh, yeah, it was a fun night, but it didn't end that well. Um, we have about three minutes to go here. Uh, do we get the earnings? Do we have the earnings board? Do we do this? Oh, shoot, I didn't even do my thing. Um, oh can my we, God. do we have it? Just very quickly. The earnings recap board. show will not be starting on time, FYI. Earnings board? What is the earnings board immediately? Because I don't have anything set up. No, here. we do. We, Dara said we had it. All right, I'll just set up the closing show, Neil. You take this away. Uh, okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to say a couple. Uh, I believe we have ASML is going to be on the board. Uh, UAL going to be reporting as well. So we're going to have a little bit of airlines and travel uh, to talk about. I don't know. We're not seeing it, but uh, I don't know what else is there. Those are the two big ones that I'm going to be paying attention to. ASML is a huge bellwether I'll stock. I'll just look it up myself. Uh, huge bell. There it is. ASML before the market tomorrow morning. Um, and then United's aftermar is aftermarket tonight. Inter that's the other one, IBK, our interactive brokers is going to be after the bell. So I think, I don't know how much that's going to be a trading stock. I think for trading, it's going to be United's usually the mover. ASML is just about, it's going to move the chips uh, because you can't make advanced chips without their technology or well, without the machine that they use, their advanced lithography or whatever you pronounce it, machine. Uh, so ASML. It is a European name, so it's going to trade primarily uh, over in Amsterdam, should be the primary market for ASML. So the report's going to be like very, very early in the morning. But uh, we'll bring it to you tomorrow morning. In the aftermarket, you're going to get United Live, yeah. which on JB Hunt as well, I guess maybe you'll be paying attention uh, to that. And then IBKR, a lot of people have been asking about IBKR. Uh, it's all platform. I know Sharif is interested in using them. I've never really used uh, interactive brokers myself. But uh, shout out to Adair for getting that ready for us and getting that one up. Should be an interesting rest of the week. And we started out here with a few more names, but then we're going to get Netflix, obviously, later in the week. I think that's going to be the big one that everyone's waiting for in the tech space. That said, no rest for the wicked uh, at all. I really think when you get Netflix and TSM, it'll matter a little bit more than ASML, but it's a nice little taste for some of the bigger names when we get a start of it. Uh, the banks have been fun and interesting, but they haven't been the trading vehicles like some of these other bad boys. So let's be excited uh, to get some bigger earnings starting to come through. We always love earnings season around here. Is this true, Joseph F? Oh, give me a break, AMC. Like, really? I gave up on AMC, and now it's going to go into VWAP. Sometimes it be like that. 
And you know what? Uh, when you get a chance, check out Trade TV, <laughs> Trade TV 20 on Trade Ideas, because I feel like that was a subtle hint that we should be making that plug uh, there when you had that interesting look there. No, I just, I don't know what was going on <laughs> with that one. Uh, but uh, great day. This is hilarious, but I'm just going to show you guys AMC. I decide to give up on it because it's not moving and make like one cent on that trade. And then now it's going to plunge into VWAP. But you got to get out. Like, you can't hold on to these things forever at the end of the day. It was flat out. It was not moving. I defend the, the decision to get out of the trade. Uh, a lot of times, it's not worth it letting it go into a losing trade. Like, why even lose the two cents? It ends up flushing now because why not? Um, Joseph's saying Red Lobster's going under. I have no idea. I'm not a huge Red Lobster fan. I love seafood, but I love good seafood. And I love those local places. If I go down to Miami, if I go out east, I want to get something local. I think that's the best way to have uh, seafood, not something generic. But you know what you got to do? When we get to the end of the day, the camera needs to get off me and my ugly mug, and it needs to go on to Adara so we can drop the countdown on what was another fun day in the market, which still could close red. Yes, in five, four, three, two, and... All right, so now I'm calling it red. I'm calling red on this one. Uh, I saw all zeros on the NASDAQ, but there was a very, very split second. Like for a split second, I also saw 0.01 to the downside on the NASDAQ. So like why they're calling, I mean, we could call it a push. The poll was like 51 to 49 anyways, but I swear like, it's actually red right now on the NASDAQ. So I think everybody wins in that particularly. How about that? Everybody wins. Uh, because it was technically a push, but we're red now, so uh, negative wins. Uh, shout out to Fabian Ramin and the ones and twos doing a fantastic job as always. Great day, uh, great day on the midday as well. We had Sharif, Adara, uh, day two going live while still delivering the midday lesson. And on top of that, even giving live commentary when Powell's at the event. So you're doing three things at the same time. Like you think it's, you think it's hard to talk and trade? Well, imagine paying attention to Powell as he's given, his, as he's giving, not a speech, but as he was at that talk. I think it was a fantastic job done by Adara and Shree, but we always do. Shout out to Frank. We love him as a guest, and uh, we love it when he pumps the market to the upside because it's comical that it still happens seemingly every single week, twice a week. But you know what time it is. You got summer earnings after. Oh, you want me to stretch it? So I'm going to stretch it by saying um, I'm going to have some Subway tonight, which is unfortunate for me. I'm just, they just told me to stretch, so I'm just going to say that. No, it's because my daughter has gymnastics, and my wife is finally wrapping up her data, her data security course, but she's going to be busy. And there's going to be only enough time for me to order like Uber Eats on the train and then like Stuff it, you know, get, get with my daughter to eat really, really fast when I get home. And then we're out the door to gymnastics. I always love it. Uh, oh, shoot, it's swimming tonight. See, I can't even keep a track. Then we're out the door to, to swimming, which it'll be a big one because last week she kind of, she had that elbow thing and she fell. So she's a little bit pensive because the last time she was at swimming, she took a big time spill. She was not running. But um, sometimes, you know, kids are. Like, if she got hurt last time, she's like, do I really want to go? So I'm like, yeah, you love sandwiches. We're going to have sandwiches tonight, so you're in a good mood. And she just gets right back up, and kids are resilient. But uh, it's going to be busy for me. Then we're right back at it here tomorrow. And you know it's going to be an absolute wild one. Derek Thompson, I will not tell the cigar story now. I want to save that for, like, an actual... Like, if I'm telling you, if I'm telling you guys the cigar story, then I'll do that if I, get, if I get a chance to get back on the pod. If we do, if we do some, kind of a, uh, some kind of a lower brow talk where we're not talking about the market, because I have to explain the entire evening. Like, it started at this, like, Cuban restaurant in Dallas, which, by the way, had the most ridiculous cars I've ever seen in the parking lot, and it ended up at the end of the night uh, in some random bar, and uh, shenanigans happen after that. But I think we are ready to go. Let's get onto the desk. We've got UAL earnings after the bell. We have a recap of all the crazy trading, and it's the market recap in general as the NASDAQ closed red. Let's go, Sean. All right, what's up, everybody? You guys know what's good. I mean, we already said the market would turn red. Uh, all right, there it is. Yeah, congratulations to everybody today. We had a bang up day. I don't know if you could tell that or not. Uh, but right now, we are getting ready to have Brian Shannon on as traders, traders, traders stay late. So we'll go bang on that one. I'm just going to call this up while everybody uh, follows over. Obviously, it's the same feed. So thank you so much. I'm just going to load this up, get the roll call going. But as you can see here today, um, 
kind of an ugly day as far as some of the major indexes go. Uh, we're not going to keep talking about uranium or UNG all the time. Gold, though, today just holding on to a positive day again. So here we go. We'll pull this out, pop out chat. Hey, where was that vote anyways? I said dump it. So that looks like that might have been right. What were the cues at the end of the day? I know we might have just turned a little bit red. It looks like we are just a tad bit positive. So congratulations to everybody that chose green. It looks like you will win, although the pullback was there at the end of the day. Um, we talked to Michael Noss, and it looks like there is some problems here uh, with these charts going back and forth. So there's the NASDAQ, a very, very choppy day as we go. So. Basically today, the, the market today, very range bound for most of the day. We had discussions from Fed Chair Powell, of course, with Tiff Macklem there in Canada. Uh, and he talked about restrictive policy needs further time to work as inflation remains persistent. Similar concepts and talk from Jefferson uh, today. Hotter than data, uh, hotter than expected data also continues. So here's the NASDAQ. Let me go back to the daily. And here we go. Nice little pullback. Potentially seeing some bottoms here in the NASDAQ. I don't know. Today was a zero day. We wait. Tomorrow we get the big dog. We've got Netflix coming tomorrow. We've already talked about where this looks on the RSI. Can Netflix hold 600 bucks? We'll find out immediately. Oil and XLE, uh-oh, ruh-roh. Uh, we are getting close to possibly getting some out here on the XLE. I apologize, man. Over 300 trades or so today. We're gonna have a sip of water. That's one of the oldest animations, the Hydration Nation. So uh, shout out to everybody out there. Uh, XLB takes it a little bit on the chin. I was noticing that there today, back into the 50 period. Right now is the materials sector coming back in. XLI, uh, downside again here today, down 0.23. So many names are at 50 period moving averages. I'm not sure it's time to buy unless you're dollar cost averaging or maybe potentially not in to some of these names. We had a good day for UNH though. UNH today up 5%. Look at that bounce. Let's close this. Look at that bounce off of some nice level support there at 450 as UNH comes through today with some good stories there. Real estate stocks fall uh, today followed by a bunch of price, sorry, um, real estate following a drop in housing starts for March. So that's this, XLRE. Look at the housing stocks today. Real estate downside as a drop in housing starts hits the market. So there it goes. This one, again, underneath the 200 period. Remember our friend Warren, Mr. Buffett, I believe, XHB. This guy was involved as well. The housing sector, wow, that really boomed out there for this home builders ETF. But again, a pull back in on this as well. Possible buy uh, spots, 94, 95 here for XH, uh, this is XHB. China still can't get out of its way, man. As more of this political unrest happens, we have China hitting back again down today into the 50 period moving average. But we've talked about this, possibly getting out of some of that as we hit the top of $25 again. Um, major mega cap stocks today, led by chip names. Check out AMD today. Let's flip this over uh, into the three minute chart. We don't finish on highs, but pretty close to it, up to near 164 again. Look how choppy this is, but up 1.78 as Stifle comes in today and upgrades a couple of these names. Both AMD and NVDA upgraded today, both holding fort, helping this NASDAQ stay uh, petite Greensville today on that gold SLV. Let's check out some silver as we go on SLV, down 2.39% again uh, there today. I say again, but we had a big move up, now a fade back in silver. I still believe that as a store of value, we know China continues to buy some gold. So I feel like this story is nowhere near done. I think gold can get actually higher than this. I think it wasn't JP Morgan. Uh, those of you that are in the chat, big shout out 
to everybody that's here right now. Over 2,600 of you watching. Here it is right now. Ooh, what's up to everybody? You want to do an early roll call? Let's do an early roll call uh, to see who's here with us right now. That's right. UAL has earnings. What am I doing? All right. Uh, forget the roll call. Roll call can wait. UAL, I forgot about that. My bad. Uh, right there. UAL with earnings. We are back into earnings season. That's why you guys are here. Let's go to Ben Zinga right now. Over 2,300 of you watching. I don't see UAL on here. I am not going to report a number that I do not see. So we'll wait on that one. But UAL right now going to the upside. An obvious bang up move for UAL. You can see here up 4% year to date uh, for UAL, but starting to go higher up to $44. Let's flip it over into the daily chart and see what's going on with this. So here we are. We are back up to the 200. I would say bang, but watch out for a fail now on UAL as it comes up to the upside. We wrote down here, here, let's go over uh, next topic. I'll change it. There it is. ASML, we won't get that. We'll wait for it. That's tomorrow morning. We'll wait for UAL and I think IBKR is tonight. Are we wrong on that one? Uh, IBKR. Let me just get that again. So not much happening on the daily chart. We'll flip this over. Not much happening right now either. IBKR is post market on the 16th. Okay. Okay. So we'll wait for that right now. There it is. Raises dividend. Maybe IBKR is out. Let me just flip this over to a minute chart and see if we do get IBKR. So up and down, not looking too interesting right here on a one minute, but I did see this on Benzinga. So where was it right here? By the way, this is brought to you by Benzinga. This is a great platform. Releasing the news when they get it. There it is. Interactive Brokers raises dividend from 10 cents to 25 cents. 250%, 150% raise. Nice move there uh, for them. But I am not seeing uh, the report out yet for IBKR. There it is. Uh, okay, I, I'm my bad. So it's just not moving around. Here it is right here. Gap uh, diluted of 161. EPS of 164, as we can see right there. Looks like they're going to, and then there's the, the gap uh, raise on the dividend as well. So they're going to beat on the top and on the bottom. Revenues and EPS both beating and a quarterly raise. So I apologize. Bang it out there for IBKR. Nice story. We like that one. 10 new stories coming in right now. Is one of them UAL? And yes, it is. Here it is right now, live. Here we go, breaking news. That's enough. I, I really like that, just a little long. Uh, there it is right now. It's UAL coming out, beating now 15 cents. So to the negative side, but they beat 15 cents versus negative 57. Also on the sales. We know they got butts in seats, man. Hard to come across airline travel now. Very expensive. Butts and seats, UAL. I mean, I don't know. You guys tell me. I haven't traveled in a minute. I just have heard that airlines continue uh, to be pretty sold out. Uh, there it is right now. UAL shares are trading higher if the company reported better than expected Q1 financial financial results. So here we go. Let's just have a quick look. That's still IBKR. Let's go over to UAL and have a quick look. Yes, sir. UAL right now up seven and a bit on a good report. We did have UNH come out today. Um, pretty aggressive move uh, today for UNH, but look what happened. The move was pretty much all earnings. After today, you can start to see a little bit of back and forth. If we're gonna drop an anchored VWAP on something, let's do it right now. Let's drop it to that low of the earnings report and then see, look at that anchor. So the purple is the anchor right now, hitting it right there on the one minute, faded the anchored VWAP pretty much all day, hit there, hit there, took it out, but then at the end of the day, we wind up underneath the anchor from earnings. So there it is right there. Nice move for UNH. We also had J&J &J on our mind today, but we didn't trade much of it. Hydration Nation. I could put Hydration Nation on my board over here, but I know that they like hitting it over there. J&J, uh, &J. so a three minute chart here for J&J. &J. Let's have a quick look. What did this stock do today? I don't really trade earnings too, too often as you guys will know live on the show. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that often you get this kind of movement, right? Like J&J &J will start the day. I believe it started the day with a nice positive move, right? Uh, there's J&J, &J. so uh, down there, we were basically flat. Uh, good move there off the open, I guess. Faded in to 144, J and J down 2% today after all is said and done. But pretty choppy trading again. You could have bought this 144. That would have been pretty good, but you had to have withstand a 60 cent drop down. That's probably enough to get me out off of that day's bottom. But Johnson and Johnson, let me flip this over to the daily chart just to see how this is. This name's been pretty like 
Meh. But, yeah, look at that. Wow. Let me look at a weekly chart here for Johnson & Johnson. I want to check back on IBKR. Not much happening. Wow, okay. Wow, Johnson & Johnson not performing very well at all. I believe that once I drop an anchored view up on this right down here to that bottom, yeah, we are well under right now and starting to fade. Anchor view up very similar to everything up here. Huge move to the downside for Johnson & Johnson. If you're looking for some value, you may want to pick this one up, but do not get caught in value traps because no matter what this dividend is, 3 or 4%, you lost 2% today just on the equity. Be careful with J&J. &J. Um, obviously, as we continue to hit downside momentum, Johnson & Johnson looks like a pretty weak name. We did also have Morgan Stanley come through on the week. It's kind of stuck here. We're waiting for this to break through $94. Uh, but a good day for Morgan Stanley, up that two and a half. We also had BAC come through today as well. I put this on the radar at 38. We don't get a 38 because why? Wow. Uh, just like JP Morgan, Bank of America goes the other way. So Bank of America coming back in today and again bouncing off of the 200 period moving average, Bank of America hits low right there today. Weekly chart, not looking great for BAC. We've talked about some of these banks. Wells Fargo looks like it wants to break out. Bank of America looks like it wants to break down. Why trade? Like, this is the thing. You don't have to be in the names just because. I would wait for stronger names, let the charts and let the price action speak. Like Wells Fargo right here, looks like we might have found a top for sure. But if you break long, then this is probably a decent trade for you. I like this break long on Wells Fargo. So again, something to look at here, trade the better names. IBKR came out with earnings. Let's just have a quick look on that one. Let's flip this over uh, into a one minute chart. We'll flip back, we'll change this into one minute and see what's going on. IBKR right now flat. UAL comes out with a report. That's a nice move to the upside right there. So this seems to be working out for us. Nice job, not for me, but nice job there. Hey, an ETF that we don't track enough. If you are looking for airlines, and we will welcome Brian Shannon in just a couple of seconds as I see he's logged on. Welcome to Brian in just a couple minutes. We'll talk all about this. AMD reports uh, coming up uh, very soon. April the 16th is today. AMD report, I just saw it comes to AMD reporting next week. We'll wait for that. Jets ETF, look on the daily, we're still above. I think you can play weakness in the airlines by buying the Jets ETF. The top four holdings are all like 10%, UAL, uh, Delta, American, and it might be Air Canada there, but there's probably one that I'm missing. So uh, Jets ETF, do your research, but that's something to look at here if you are excited for that. Interest, sensitive, um, interest rate sensitive sectors continue to make moves down, including here, the solar ETF in Invesco, Oh man, I mean, we could talk to Brian about this. I don't know if there's enough of you that are interested in this name, but Enphase could be a name. We've talked about Solar Edge as well. Uh, ENPH was the healthiest of the group and still is holding above 110. But guys, look at TAN. I don't know. I don't like catching falling knives. But this stock looks pretty bad. Let's scan it out to a weekly chart here for TAN. And let me just close this. Hmm. You know what Brian's going to tell me to do? So I'm going to beat him to it. Take my uh, face off of here. I'm going to drop an anchored view up at this weekly low right here that goes all the way back to March of 2020. Let's go back to COVID lows. Drop that down. Okay, so it dropped it up here. So it's probably going to be, I could just delete it, but let's just use it. Okay, we're nowhere near, man. Once we broke that anchor, uh, very similar to the 200 period on the high side uh, now, but there's the break. The anchored view up, probably a much better break right there, $83. Downside, then support, support, support. And you are getting killed on TAN. So I'll ask, I'll ask Brian about this one because this stock continues to go lower. If we're ready... He is ready. Uh, hey, good evening and or good afternoon, Brian. I had a, I had a, a situation here with our, our uh, board, which is Ramin, who's running the board here, with our board. Um, she said that about 4 o'clock I should be saying good evening. 
What do you, hmm. what, what do you think? It's four o'clock evening. Uh, I, uh, you know, if you're, if you're looking at for an excuse to drink, I guess that's the way you would go with it. But, uh, okay. All here right. it's two it's two twenty here, so it's not quite evening. So right. I'm, I'm going to stick with uh, you know me central, which is uh, mountain time zone. So I'm going to say good afternoon, Sean. Well then, good afternoon, Brian. I hope you had a fantastic day. And we, me and you have talked about this potential move in the market a couple times. So was there anything surprising today uh, in the market for you, or the last couple of days? Sean, it, it, you know, just the barcode nature of this morning. And I love that term, which I've completely stole from I, you. I, I put saw. little barcodes out there and stuff. Uh, that's, that's a Sean all the way. Um, what has surprised me? No, nothing really. Right. I mean, we're, the markets are doing what they're supposed to do. We had a phenomenal run off of last October's lows. We ran up, we distributed really for the last four or six weeks. And now we're getting a little bit of a uh, price correction. We're coming down in these markets to key levels, the S&P at the 38.2% retracement, as well as okay. uh, an important anchored VWAP, same with the NASDAQ, uh, the home builders, as you mentioned. I've got this monthly uh, tan up, Sean, yeah, to show you cool. something here, which is pretty crazy since the inception of the tan, the solar index. Look at the anchor from the inception of it, how well this is traded along this as support and resistance. Wow. It's pretty amazing that, you know, that goes back to 2008, how relevant these anchors can be. It's not just for day trading, as some people think. Brian, I, you, you might find a kick of this, uh, kick on this one, but who's managing this fund? Kathy Wood? I mean, this was $300. Now you're down to $39. I know you have a nice... Uh, soft spot in your heart uh, for the ARK ETF, but um, maybe we can call that up. I mean, you and I have talked about that uh, a bit and, and sort of where that's been going. She's been right about a few things. Let's give some credit, Bitcoin, Tesla, but some of these other names, we saw one, and I don't even know if you know this, but her average cost on this Pacific Biosciences, come over to my screen here, uh, just to your point, keep on ARK, B for, or ARK for now though, Brian, but look at this, this Pack B Pacific Bioscience, Neil looked it up and her average cost is $19 on this name. We're down at $1.50 and breaking lower. Not all of it her fault, but we can't be managing our positions like this. Let a stock that's $19, $20 get down to a dollar forward. I think you and I agree. Part of the staying power of traders like you and I is risk management. You and I preach that all the time. Sure. I mean, I saw her fund is down 15, 16% year to date once again. I mean, people thought she was back last year because she yep. had a bounce back year in the market, but uh, you know, Morningstar called it Beth. She, Beth, she is a destroyer of wealth. She has destroyed over $10 billion worth of wealth. Worst fund manager, really, probably ever. I don't know if those numbers are, if, if that's true ever, but, you know, a broken clock is right twice, a, twice yep. a day. And that's your Bitcoin and your Tesla trades. In aggregate, on the ARC fund, the largest, the average price that people are involved in this fund is at about 60 and we're down at $43. That tells me the average participant over the course of 10 years is down 25%. That's horrific. No, that's that's bad. And like, <laughs> oh, Kathy? Don't accept. Spam. Mark yeah, no, 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 sorry, that was from China. That was a Chinese, that was not Kathy Wood. That was fake Kathy Wood uh, right there. But I'll tell her you said hi for sure. Um, okay, so that's the move to the downside. We have some fun on the show. We also have a Powell call and a Warren Buffett call in case we're talking uh, a little bit about value. I saw you mentioned today, you tweeted something out. And by the way, go find Brian. I mean, what a great follow. Um, thanks for the credit on that barcode. But you have so many great charts, so many different ideas that you tweet about. I saw you talk about SMCI today. So I don't know. Uh, I'll call it up on my chart and give you a second uh, to do this. Oops, uh, to do the same as well. So here's SMCI on the week. I mean, it's very, very impressive. Uh, this, this name just continues to rock and roll. And then again today, up another 10%. I mean, bouncing off of 870. Who would have thought that that maybe was a key level? This name just continues to run. We do have earnings coming up in just under... What did it say? The 16th, so just two weeks today, actually, uh, coming for Super Micro. But, I mean, maybe we should just play the trend here, Brian, and, and just keep going long, wait for that thousand break, and maybe we get back up to the top. Is there anything that our traders need to be concerned with, anything sort of um, attracting you over to SMCI? 
Yeah, a couple things. I, I had posted the 30 minute chart with that five day moving average. That's the orange moving average. And I posted the chart over here saying we're at a level of interest. This level of interest is, you know, from the anchored view app from that gap lower over here on this side of the chart. And then this blue is the month to date. I was kind of thinking that we might settle down in that area for today and you know, then tomorrow maybe pull back, create a little higher low here and then get going. I still think that's a possible scenario for tomorrow, but maybe we don't pull back as deep. Maybe we pull back to here and then continue higher. And then what we'd be looking for, Sean, uh, because the trend obviously is your friend and uh, uh, is the anchor off of the all time high, which would bring us to about 100, uh, 1,020 or so. And the anchor off that gap uh, at about uh, 1040. So looking for maybe a little bit of a pullback in the morning and then a ramp up to 1020, 1040 is the way uh, SMCI looks to me. And here's okay. one other real important thing is this is where we were 20 days ago. Right. You can see that 20 day moving average is declining as the end of the day today. That's because we got rid of this data right here yesterday. Tomorrow we get rid of that data, meaning the 20 day moving average will be rising once again and should like, like look like this in a couple of days. I do, I, I do like all that, and I think that playing momentum, we've had a couple of uh, traders on that trade options as well, and they talk about people getting positioned up ahead of earnings, especially on names like this, where you're in the right sector. You've got NVIDIA, hopefully Tailwinds, AMD, potentially catching some bids today as well, and SMCI uh, levered up there. Nice move to the upside uh, for Super Micro. All right, I wanted to ask you about Netflix, because I feel like I'm getting a little bit too obsessed with the RSI. So come over to, I mean, I'm looking at the daily here and honestly, I'm seeing like the RSI just going lower and lower, uh, maybe finding a base and maybe I'm way off here, but the last time uh, we started to make some moves, we kind of stopped in and around the 50 spot uh, for RSI. And I know it's just kind of a relative strength and maybe we're not getting too much strength, but as we sort of barcode uh, here on the daily, for um, Netflix, to me, this name is vulnerable to a bad quarter. If they miss right now, I feel like they're gonna get punished pretty bad. We saw JP Morgan not even have that bad of a number and they fell down because they were priced for, 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 for perfection. I feel the same thing could be true here for Netflix, trying to hold on to something, could blow out and if it does, great. But I'm looking at if they miss here, I think this is vulnerable. Maybe even this gap fill back into 500. Maybe that's too egregious, but what do you think on Netflix? Am I being a little too cautious? No, I don't think I, I don't think you can ever be too cautious ahead of earnings, especially with a stock that has had as good a run as this have has, you know, starting the year at 470 and rallying, you know, 30 percent or so. Uh, I would be looking at, yes, the 50 day moving average in this market has, you know, the, the, the stock has corrected through time waiting for that 50 day moving average. To me, that's bullish. It's more bullish than, you know, had we pulled back to the 50 day moving average over here, uh, I've got the wrong tool on, uh, pull back, you know, over here, a deeper pullback. Instead, we time corrected. So if we get a uh, negative reaction, the first level I would be looking at, Sean, is this right here. This is the anchor from last nice. quarter's earnings. Uh, and that would be at about 585 or so. I think that's your first important level. And then the year to date anchor at about 563. Those are the two levels I'd be focused on. And then maybe throw a Fibonacci in there and say, hmm. you know, does that help us at all? Not really, just adds another confusing level. See what, okay, so right there, Brian, you just, when you said let's add a Fibonacci, I kind of like chuckled a little bit, and then you kind of answered the question that I was going to ask you, and that was sometimes we put too many things up, look at them, and then start to second guess, but I like what you did immediately there. You saw something you didn't, you're like, nah, too, not, not worth it. I like that. That shows a good time. You know what? I put the, come over here, look at this. This is, is this, I mean, I just drew the anchored view up on this bottom uh, right there at 340, which is where the whole market bought him basically in October. And looky, looky what we see right here too, Brian. Back down to 500 is where I'm seeing right now. That would be pretty unique if we got that. I'm never going to forget that day when we had NVIDIA earnings on and it was absolutely wild. And I was like, where is it going to stop? And then I happened to have you on. You threw up an anchored view up and it almost stopped. I think it was within like a couple bucks. It might've been 330. I don't, I don't remember the exact 
price. You probably remember that, and that was absolutely epic. So definitely check out some anchored VWAPs there uh, into earnings. All right. We had a question about NCNO. Someone on Go the ahead. chat remembers you talking about that one. Yes. We did get a fade in that. So now we're back down to 29 or $30. Um, again, you know, what is the story with this name? Looked like it was going to break out and in fact did break out up to 37 and change. We had earnings all the way back in March 26th, if that's correct. But here's the fade back in. Looks like we're getting weaker on NCNO. Absolutely. This one, if you recall, if we can pull up my screen, we spoke about this one week ago today yeah. and we were right here. And my, what I was saying is if it gets above this level, I want to be a buyer with a stop underneath this higher low. Right. I think I'd also drawn in an anchor here, uh, which was below that low. So instead, what we saw happen was the next day, the stock gapped lower below what was to be the stop. So whenever I'm talking about a stock, that I'm looking for a swing trade to the long side. If it hits the stop prior to the entry, it completely invalidates the trade. And in this case, by not getting involved, avoided a uh, you know, heck of a loser. Um, as they say, it's better to be on the sidelines wishing you were in than it is to be in wishing you were out. So I never traded that one right. because it never triggered. That's why we always say when we're buying on strength above a certain level, if it doesn't get there, no tick, no trade. And then once it violates the stop, it's a completely different risk reward setup. Yep. And to me, it's off the list unless it sets up again. And this has really surprised me, the, the magnitude Aggressive. of this pullback, but it's, you know, it shows you why you have risk management tools and rules of engagement and rules to not engage. Oh, 100%, I mean, I think, and that's a perfect example right there about looking at levels, finding the level, calling it, and then you don't have to execute if it doesn't react your way. Um, so great call there. And I just want to say uh, thank you for that because we were getting a follow-up question um, on the board. All right, uh, it's 4.30 already. Like when you're having fun, time flies. Uh, so thank you for joining us this afternoon. But is there another sort of name um, like that NCNO? Is there anything else that's sort of like tickling your fancy? That's something that GCT might be an interesting one. It okay. kind of trades similar to SMCI. Um, it's a lower price stock. It's above the anchor from the all-time high. It got a little bit extended here today like SMCI did. So I think if you get a pullback maybe tomorrow down, you know, 3450-ish and then back above the one and two-day volume weighted average price levels uh, that you buy it somewhere above those with a stop below here. Uh, and let me just say, so th to be clear, if it breaks yep. below here first, that invalidates the trade. I wouldn't be interested in it. Well, that makes perfect sense. I was just going to try to see when they report. Um, do you always look for um, when stocks potentially report before? I do. Yeah, and, and on, on each one of my uh, stock, uh, charts that you can see right up here in the upper oh, okay. uh, up, upper bar, you said next you see next earnings report is five twenty two. Right. That's on all of my charts because I it's that important. I need to be aware of it. Yep, I agree. And I was just noticing that one May twenty third. So we're we are a little ways away. All right, over two thousand watching. I want to thank you, Brian. They can go find you at Alpha Trends. Unfortunately, I can't find a copy of your book, but it's absolutely fantastic. Um, advanced trading techniques with a VWAP. What is, what is the title? What is it called? Uh, maximum trading gains with anchor view. I had to look down. Maximum trading gains. That was like advanced <laughs> trading gains. Maximum trading gains with your anchored view off. Go check him out. It's at Alpha Trends and it is Brian Shannon. Thank you so much for joining me once again here on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks Thank everybody you. for tuning in. Ciao. That's Brian Shannon. It really doesn't get much better. Uh, than that. So I want to give a big shout out uh, to Mr. Shannon one more time as he confirms it is afternoon. So good afternoon, Brian, and thank you one more time uh, for joining. All right, look, um, I wasn't able to log in. I think I got to up update the software over here, to be honest with you. Uh, so once we do that, look, we had a couple good trades today, including fading Apple. We actually wound up going eight for eight today. Um, but again, we'll, we'll, we'll hold off on that. Oh, shout out to Adara uh, who messaged me here today. LVMH actually down today. The world's richest man, Bernard Arnault uh, with LVMH loses 1.2% of 240 billion today. Uh, net worth, a lot of that tied up in stock, but look at this man. 
Ramin, we've got up right now, 2% up. Let's get those bags. But Ramin doesn't have one unless it's a Birkin, so we'll wait for that. Uh, perfume and cosmetic, up 7%. Jewelry and watches, that's surprising, down 2%. Retail, we've talked about that. Sephora, hello. Um, and then right there, wines and spirits, down 12%. Is that a puff, puff, pass problem? LVMH down 12% uh, on liquor. Smartphone, I mean, Samsung retakes the crown there from Apple. We've talked about that one. Um, very, very interesting. 60 million units sold for Samsung versus Apple's 50 million. But remember, Apple just has the flagship. They do have different sizes. Samsung, I believe, the Fold, a couple different phones in there as well. Uh, hey, look, it's a concern for me. When China comes through and says, we're holding back on buying Apple phones for certain uh, sectors of the government and certain companies. That can't bode well for Apple and that. Um, anyways, Huawei, Xiaomi, and Samsung all taking uh, market share from that. Look, we just finished what a great day it was there trading, and I feel like we just killed this market recap show. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and make sure that you do join me tomorrow. That is for sure. I'm going to be here at 8.30. That's, you know, rise and shine, baby. Join me, Sticky No Nation. Traders stay late. Thank you to Brian Shannon and for everybody else out there. Good afternoon and good evening. I'm coming home very, very soon. I will see you soon, Marissa, and see everybody tomorrow at 8.30. Follow me on the gram.